All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. We're about to just, I guess, kick this stream off. It should be a lot of fun. I'm here today with uh, my buddy Chris, who's got a game, Skull's Impossible Quest, that he's just about to release on Steam. And we're going to go through a couple of final features and just little polished things that he's going to add on to the game before getting it ready to, you know, well, I guess push out to a, a final Steam build. He's going to do the release in the, I guess, the next month, end of next month, maybe beginning of March, right around there. So if you're curious about it, want to check it out, make sure you check out the, uh, I'll leave the link up there the whole time on the stream. So you can just go check the game out, uh, go wishlist it, go grab it now or whatever. Maybe we'll give away a couple free keys as well. All right. Um, so I guess I just wanted to say thanks to Chris first for coming to join me. Appreciate you doing this kind of last second. I asked him yesterday and he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'll hop on and we'll, we'll do this thing. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get to go through you know, an actual cool project that's just about complete and ready to go out, see what that actually you know, looks like you know, in its final form. Because I think a lot of the time people get to see the beginning of projects or, you know, like a little piece of a project here and there, but it's where you get to see like kind of the insides of something that's been worked on for a while and it's just about to actually launch. And the last types of things that you're working on right before launch too, the stuff that you're kind of stuck with. Um, not really <laughs> stuck with, but you know, the, the remaining things. That, Everything that, that was avoided before, uh, before uh, the end, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks again, man, for for coming out here um, and just, absolutely you know, being willing to share your project with everybody and talk through this stuff and you know, give us something interesting to talk about. Also, for everybody on the stream, we're just gonna be taking random game dev questions and stuff too. While Chris is going through working on stuff, we'll be just chatting and uh, answering questions, talking about stuff. Um, and if you guys have feedback or thoughts on the game or random really cool ideas maybe you can distract him and delay his release by a couple months with giant feature creep or something uh, i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me all those good ideas actually uh you know i really love working off the feedback and uh one thing that i plan to do is uh, right after releasing the game i'm just going to keep cranking out features um and so you know i i think you know on our previous uh, discussion that we broadcasted I told everybody I work on this six hours a week, um, but but my pipeline, like the ability for me to release a new feature, is is really fast. So I plan to, you know, try and release something new to the game, uh, you know, every week. You know, six hours worth of work, launch it, you know, put it out there, and then another six hours worth of work, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. I'm I'm excited. Nice. That's interesting. Some six hour sprints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so like, um, you know, all my tasks are broken down. Like this first one I'm going to work on is, uh, is just a community button to kind of link to uh, a discord channel so I can, you know, get people giving me feedback in the discord. Um, and, and so, you know, it's a really small thing, but I can kind of throw it up there. And uh, since the game is kind of largely complete in the sense that it's you know got a full storyline, it's got a whole set of levels, um, you know everything that I think I originally wanted people to start playing in the game. There's a lot of these quality of life features that you can keep adding over time, and um, and so you know some bigger features might go in there, but uh, yeah, it's, you know six hours at a time. I kind of want to have something that's kind of like a little bit newer and a little bit uh, more interesting. Um, so, yeah, yeah i just think of, it's an impressive cool. timeline in general to do just about anything a lot of people you know struggle to get anything done in six hours that's just like a normal work day right and <laughs> i don't know how many times yeah. i've had a work day where i went in and i left and i was like i don't know what i actually did this day you know, it, it, hap <laughs> it happens more than you like to admit sometimes and i know for some people it happens Absolutely. all the time right so, yeah <laughs> like, yeah it's just impressive well, like making that into a, a sprint i guess to come up with feature or you know maybe not come up with the feature but go through the full release cycle of a feature and get it out there and push it out um so i guess yeah. we'll kind of get to see a little bit of what that looks like on a on a smaller scale here because i don't think we'll go for a yeah. six hours <laughs> and you usually don't batch it into six hours straight right you do two hour chunks yeah it's two hour chunks so it's two hours a day over three days um sometimes i get ideas to to do things um a lot of the time i i you know spend two two of those hours on a game dev call getting feedback so um you know in in 
you know, so, so sometimes it's just four hours of actual work and then two hours of like reflecting on what was done. Right. Um, and, uh, and then I use, you know, Unity Collab. I, I just hit publish that automatically makes a build and then I can, I can get people playing it and trying it out um, within that time. So uh, if I didn't, uh, you know, if I didn't have the CI CD stuff and in Collab, I would uh, I'd essentially, you know, I, it, would, it would be impossible because the build itself takes too long. And then, you know, getting it off my computer onto a server somewhere and then getting it into people's hands, it would it would eat up six of those hours anyway. You know, every every few uh, six hour chunks, right? Yeah, and for anybody who's not familiar with those, he's talking about um, he's using Unity's Collaborate system, which is just their built in source control that you get it for free, and then you can can commit to that and use Unity's Cloud Build, which is a CI or continuous integration system that does a build, and then it will also do continuous deployment, so it will build the game out completely after he makes his changes, hits the button to commit the code. It'll do all of the work of building it and deploying it out into like a web player and a Windows player for Steam and everything else just automatically. So he doesn't have to go through that. It's not instant. Like you said, it takes a while. But the fact that he doesn't have to do anything other than basically what he would do normally for saving off his code and still gets a free build makes it so that he can have builds constantly without wasting a, wasting any time. So zero of that six hours gets wasted doing builds. It's just all automatic, right? A after the first setup. Yep. So it's yep. De definitely something I would recommend and Chris recommends highly. And I think you, you pretty much do this for every project that is gonna stay around for more than a day or two, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and so, you know, what I do, uh, I guess at the beginning of this project, you know, we had this whole, uh, um, prototyping period and uh, in, in those prototypes I was just kind of uploading to an S3 bucket because I would I would work for about six hours making a prototype. I would uh, use all the unity standard assets pro builder to make the levels and then I'd, I'd ask my my uh, my group of uh, feedback providers to to tell me like hey uh, you know play this prototype what do you think and then and then so I had you know, three prototypes, and then I just, uh, you know, incrementally built on those for a while. And then after about, I think it was three months, I don't know, uh, Jason, you, you were part of that group a little bit. And so uh, I think, you know, for about three months, I was just trying to decide between three different projects I really had in mind. And, um, and this is the project that really came, uh, came to, to the limelight. So then uh, shortly after that, I set it up with uh, Cloud Build. And what Cloud Build did was allowed me to release um, you know, basically it automatically creates a WebGL build and creates a share link and then automatically posts it to a Discord server. And so every time I pushed to collaborate, uh, you know, people had a build with a link, you know, I didn't have to do anything, right? Like I, I would just hit publish and then go to sleep. And then the next day everybody had, you know, kind of already had a chance to play it or I could send out links to people or whatever. Um, it, it's just kind of, you know, I, I had a friend say like, I know exactly when you, you're working on this because I always get a Discord notification when uh, when a build is ready. And so it's just kind of funny. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I really love it. It's just like that you get that time savings and everybody gets to see your stuff constantly. Like if you have to build, zip it up and build it and send it out to each person individually, it's just not going to happen. So setting up the automated thing saves you time and uh, get, get your results. So. I think it works out yeah. well. Uh, some people were asking questions about um, cloud build having a cost and cloud build versus Git. Um, I don't, last I checked, cloud build was still available on a free version. I don't know if they've changed it. You may have to go up to um, the plus one now, but I, yeah, I, it I was on paying, the free, but they may have changed think, that now. I think I'm paying about $30 a month, but I think that was just for a number of the other features. Um, but I think that there's a, a certain amount of time or something along those lines, but you should check the pricing. And um, cause I know that there was like a free tier at one point, I don't know if it's still there or not, but um, in the $30 a month, it, it includes one build agent that's available all the time. And uh, I think a whole lot of space. So, so, you know, before I did cloud build, um, what I was doing was I had a free account on GitLab um, and, uh, I actually, um, you know, collaborate is a little weird in the sense that it, it kicks off a build every single, uh, um, uh, well, I mean, it, it, Git kicks off a build every single revision as well. Uh, but, you know, collaborate, I still, uh, feel kind of weird about, um, 
I guess the history and rolling back and collaborate and things like that. So I actually commit to both Git and and collaborate and collaborate. I use for the builds because uh, and then all of the large assets work a lot better in collaborate than they do in Git. And so uh, I keep code revisions and, and other smaller files uh, in Git as well as collaborate and collaborate's responsible for the build. But what's nice is my, my really large assets, the large files, they work, they play a lot nicer in collaborate than they do in Git. Like Git has all this like Delta compression stuff that it does before it's upload. And what I found was stuff like large textures and sounds and everything like that were just like, I mean, you know, it, it would create tons of problems in Git. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, I, I found myself like debugging Git for hours on end at one point. And so I just decided, hey, I'm going to try collaborate. And, um, and and what I realized is that the, the transfer of the files, I, I think that's the optimization that Unity must have made is that uh, collaborate just deals with large files a lot better. And so when I started doing my audio pass, for example, um, Git totally messed me up. And, and, uh, and so then I kind of split them into two. So for granular revisions where I'm committing all the time, I, I do those in Git. And then when I'm, when I'm kind of ready, uh, I will then um, do a, a push up to collaborate, which will then create a build. And so that's, that's been my workflow lately. Um, but it's not, you know, uh, I, I was doing, um, you know, before it was just Git, push to GitLab, do a local build of WebGL, and then upload it to an S3 bucket, and then expose the S3 bucket to the public, and then and then let people try it out. So that was my initial workflow, um, but it just wasn't as efficient as this. And then, uh, you know, I guess another thing that I should talk about is um, I have a Python script that will go to the Unity API it pulls down the builds and then uh, that Python script also uses the Steam command line to then publish the build to Steam. And so in a single button click, I can have a build up on Steam um, and, uh, and not have to think about anything. So what it does is it downloads it from Unity, unzips it to a folder. Um, then if you're familiar with the Steam deployment stuff that has all the metadata for the Steam deployment, then it runs the, the Steam command line, which then publishes it up to Steam. Um, and then Steam has a manual step for releasing, which is to go in and, and just say publish. And, and then that's when you, you know, when you're using that manual step, then you can, uh, the build is already there for you. And so it goes, it goes real fast. Um, and that's been, that's been super nice. Cause now, now while I'm working in Steam, um, you know, after you pay the hundred dollars or whatever to put a game up there, um, the, uh, the workflow there is just run the Python script when you're ready to have your users see what you have. And, um, and so there's very little time I spend doing anything manually in that process. Yeah, that's really nice. And for anybody who's, I guess, never published something on Steam before, that process, like, like that it's pretty easy once you've got it set up. It's basically running that and you just have to go over there and flip the build on and then every one of your users just gets that automatic update, just like you get the Know, your, your game updates in steam i said you mm -hmm. don't have to really do anything to create the update the steam uploader just kind of figures out the delta for you automatically uploads that and creates the patch for you it makes it really really sweet so you just uh there's just so little work it was one of the easiest things i remember when i first got to do it i was like <laughs> this is way easier than it should be like I, I just run a little batch file put put two little lines of text in a batch or a text file run a batch file and it works Suddenly yeah. I have a game on Steam. I was like, what the hell? This is, yeah. A after going through everybody else's process and seeing that, I was pretty, pretty impressed. Right? <laughs> like, it was, yeah, it was yeah, by I, far the know. fastest. I didn't have to go through some crappy web page that aired out and upload different files every time and fill in a bunch of forms for every upload and every version. Like, just hit a button and got the new version up there in like five minutes. I've got a new update to my game out. Nice and fast and instant. And yeah, you can just switch the versions. You can see all the different versions in there. So good stuff. So um, yeah. I don't know. You guys want to get started with um, a little bit of game dev stuff? If so, you want to just hit the thumbs up button real quick and we'll kick off and maybe start adding in something to, to this game. Or maybe you, I don't know if you want to show or maybe we'll add something and then show it. <laughs> like, what do you yeah, want to do? Um, you know, so, so for me, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to, 
kind of add this button uh, coming up, but um, you know, I can I could give a tour through the project if people wanted to do that too. Let's start with um, the button first, and then and then go yeah. through like a a tour or something. So the button oh, was yeah, going to sure. be a one to show get everybody into Discord from the game so they can give feedback, um, get their changes put in, and whatever yeah. other ideas and stuff they've got, right? So yeah, you see my main main menu right here. Uh, so so the kind of a couple of the main things that are going on. Um, you know, I, I have the level select and and I have kind of these like camera transitions between areas uh, and and you know showing different options, things like that. Um, that's all using Cinemachine and everything. Um, hitting play takes you to the first level. Uh, and so all I want to do is just create another one of these buttons and then um, wire it up to uh, go out to a website. And so um, I think that's just like an application dot open uh, to just use the default browser. Um, that'll take them to a, uh, a refer or an ad link to the Discord channel, and um, and then you know once I add that in there, then you know people can start joining the Discord and and telling me like, hey, it'd be really cool if this was in the game. I got that's kind of my goal with it. Um, and so I just want a, a prominent like uh, join the community or something button right there. So that's that's the goal right now. Sweet. Yeah, let's put that thing in. So where are you going to put that into that existing panel or? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, so, so uh, you know, one, one little button here that I've started using a lot more is this like hide the visibility um, so that I can actually see what's happening in the scene view here. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, um, especially in these cases. So that's just um, a little eyeball in the hierarchy, right? Show yeah, right, right to the toggle left right off here. And hide stuff. Uh, and, and so, you know, I don't want to see the level select pane. I don't want to see the options pane. So I can actually work on this one. Um, and they're all kind of like tiled on top of each other because I, I, I did a really simple uh, menu system in here. But, you know, so yeah, usually that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just kept it real simple. Uh, I have some of those like plugins or whatever to do um, other systems like that. But, um, you know, sometimes they just don't really work out for me um or, or not they don't work out for me but they're a lot more work than necessary i think is is really what i'm trying to get at yeah um a lot of time so you, you just need a simple simple ui yeah yeah exactly okay, so you just have these all positioned manually then yeah yeah okay. uh you know so so actually that's a good point i could just add a um you could a add group. a group but it's just going to make it more complicated you're going to have to move all the shit around and spend another 10 minutes relaying it out <laughs> to get it perfect <laughs> For, for no benefit, because you're not going to add yeah. another one later. Like, it makes sense to add the group and the auto layout stuff if you're going to. Yeah, but exactly. I think, yeah, now you would just. Um, so, so anyway, I mean, this is what I was just planning on doing. Um, yeah. Is is dropping one of these things in here. Um, maybe checking the the layout stuff in here and just, yeah, you know, throwing it in there. Okay. Um, this is a, there's a custom editor uh, extension that I have that's really good for making sure layouts scale properly. Um, anchors to corners and corners to anchors. If you just Google that, um, you, you'll notice that my anchors here are all offset from the four points here. Yeah. And so this is, this is a big quality life thing. And especially when I was working on mobile games, it, like all the different screen and form factors, it's, it's surprising that Unity doesn't actually have this feature in, in Unity. Um, so you saw the opposite effect there where it brought it back to the anchors, right? Yeah. But that's not quite what I want. Um, you want instead, uh, you want to move the, basically those triangles need to move up to where the dots are. Yeah, exactly. And, and actually that kind of messed everything up. So I'm going to undo that. And then I'm going to pick the other option this time. Um, and, uh, and so it'll be anchors to corners. And so it'll, it'll just drop it into the right place. Um, for each and the of those. anchors are for anybody who's curious. Those are the things that it uses to determine like how and where to stretch when you switch resolutions or play on a different device. Yeah. So if I'm in, in free aspect mode now, this is what it's kind of kind of look like. And depending on the size of the screen, you'll you'll see all the buttons properly move. If my anchors were in a different spot, then it's just gonna, um, yeah, it's just gonna totally screw up the UI. And so I did have a question. How come you don't yeah. switch to two D mode? When you're working on UI stuff in the scene view, um, I don't because uh, there's so sometimes habit. yeah 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 it's it's just not yeah it, it, I guess one one thing is it's habit but also um, 
sometimes I experiment with changing the UI to be in, um, in natural space. And so I think the reason that I have that habit is the screen space overlay option versus screen space camera. Um, sometimes I, I experiment with this idea of like putting menus like kind of in the 3D world and then moving the camera around to the appropriate menus. Um, oh. And so uh, I turned that off recently because of some conflict with the lighting. But, um, you know, I, I, I kind of like this idea of like having the menus in 3D space and then moving Doing the like camera world around. Space UIs like and stuff. Yeah, you exactly. Drop them out there and then move them. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm just curious too, because I, yeah. I, I have a habit of switching back and forth all the time, but I do have a couple issues with like uh, the scale and focus all the time. Like okay, mm. I've gotten really good with the mouse wheel, so I can just kind of flip back yeah. and forth fast enough, but Unity has made me hone that skill. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of like uh, use the F key and, and kind of bounce in and out or whatever. Um, okay. But yeah. And I guess it, you still have it on your game view, so you, you could see it if you wanted to. I mean, if you had the other thing. Yeah, if I had the other thing, yeah, if I move it around or whatever. But yeah, that's that's kind of it. So uh, we can at least see the button in here. Um, it still probably does what the options button did. Um, and so, yeah, and it still says options, but at least now it kind of like looks nice in there. Um, and so it can kind of, you know, can kind of see that the button's still functioning, all that. Um, so I'm just going to, in the hierarchy, I'm going to drop it in up here. I'm going to say like, uh, unity, right? That's it. Okay. Um, and then we're going to jump into the text mesh and we're going to just say something like, um, Let's see, right. Um, also, another thing that I like to do, and maybe we'll add this as well, is uh, just just highlighting a, a single button from time to time. Um, so uh, maybe a, a stretch goal here might be to um, add a little text animation to it or it's kind of bouncing or whatever. So that might be a, a fun thing to do. So okay. but let's, um, so I'll just check and see how that, that looks fun. in the game. Um, and then I probably need a script that will do the application open. Um, so that'll be kind of fun, but, um, yeah, you need to write a, write a quick little script that will open up yeah. the page and let you, or let you set up the page and open it. Yeah. So you, you'll see, I have a bunch of unity events happening here. Um, and Wait, so on the can, button on the button. Yeah. Oh, those are from the one that you copied, right? That was yeah, the, they're from the, the one that button. I copied. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so that was that that was handling all the camera transitions. Um, oh, okay. And playing the audio and showing one menu and hiding the other one. Um, so uh, what we're going to do now is just add a new script in here. Um, and so I'm just going to go into code. Um, and let me move this to the right spot ui make sure right, and for show. your code editor you're using visual studio code right yeah vs code um and so i would use writer but i'm not paying for it right now so i'm just kind of i have the uh there's an extension actually in here um that does the JetBrains ide key map <laughs> so okay. it's pretty much you know it's a lot of the same shortcuts uh it's all the sh same shortcut keys for uh writer as it is in vs code um so that that ends up being pretty good um for me um so i usually just use the this to generate a new script uh i'll kind of come in here and so can you zoom be... in your code just a bit and make it bigger yeah that's a good question <laughs> does uh does me... VS, vs code not have a zoom yeah it does <laughs> i just don't remember exactly uh the best way to get there uh, is it not just control mouse wheel no they don't the control mouse wheel doesn't uh, you gotta get it. that in there then i'll be ready to try yeah it again. exactly <laughs> um there is like presentation mode which will probably be um or screencast mode or something along those lines. It's fine uh, if, you, if you can't, it's it's not a big, somebody's saying that you can hit control plus plus, but I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I think because of the JetBrains key map, let me turn this off real quick and then I can. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it works in there without the key map. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. We'll, we'll get it going. It's just that key map does change things to be the same. Uh, like, oh. I, like I said, the same shortcuts as, as Raider. Is that better? Yes, yeah, I think so. I think okay. you're, you're, it's definitely quite a bit bigger.
So you're saying then, that you usually start making new classes just by typing uh, typing out the class in, in yeah. the existing file? Uh, let's see. I also have, um, I know, screencast mode. I think it looks good now. It's big enough. Yeah, this will this will show my uh, you know my shortcuts oh, or shortcuts. whatever. Nice. Um, so let me go get this back on just so I have the control W and all that other stuff. Uh, well, that's cool. I'm gonna have to have to try that out. Yeah, uh, graph is debug for you. Yeah, uh, actually, um, Writer has a much better version of that. Um, well, then so I'm gonna just... have to try that out. I didn't know that was in there. I like that. Yeah, You're showing your shortcuts so you can see what what everybody's doing. Yeah, so so this one uh, actually it's not configured totally, so it's going to show everything I type, but uh, we'll fix that in a little bit. Um, there's a way to there's a setting in there to change screencast mode to do that. Um, cool. So you're going to make this new script and just move it into its own file then? Yeah, exactly. So uh, community link uh, or you know, let's see, open browser, right? Something like that. Um, then just throw that out in here. Just move it to and, a new file and then yeah. click over to it. Okay, cool. So there, now you then, have your new class. Yeah, so I mean, it's just really going to be a public function um, void and then open community link. Something like that. Okay. Uh, application dot open URL and then we're going to just paste the link in. Let me go grab it. Uh, oh, geez. Okay, so I need to go into Discord, <laughs> add the <laughs> invite user. You got to figure out how to do that. Yeah, you make sure way. that you set up an invitation that doesn't expire in a day, too. Oh, that's like yeah. the default is expires point. in okay. 24 hours. And I, I don't know how many times I've accidentally sent somebody one of those. I'm like, ah, never they... expires. <laughs> no limit to users. All right, so if you promise not to spam my Discord, everybody can join if you like. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to generate that new link. All right. This link will never expire. So All right. There we go. Drop um, that in there. And yep. Yeah, so that should just be about there, it. Chris. Yeah, exactly. All right. A unit Scary test for that. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my next project will be completely unit tested. So those who know me, not unit testing is a little off brand, but that's OK. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's much you can do to unit test a, a method that's calling one liner. That's uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> call the, the method that's go. built in. Um, OK, so I'm going to do two things here. Uh, so I'm going to find can... my community script, right? Um, right and so then you've added just... that onto the button. And yeah, then just... you can drag it up there and just assign it that way exactly and so just there and then open community link and that'll just call that method whenever you click on it and anybody yeah. that's curious you can do it like in code too i'm sure some people are freaking out wondering why it's not registered in code but like you could do it from the open community browser script if you wanted to get a reference to that button and and hook up the entire thing that way too um but i think that the way that chris has his entire ui set up is with the button on clicks kind of showing what they do when you click on them right and it makes sense to stick with that pattern throughout the whole thing because mixing and matching it gets really 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 confusing you're like why does this thing work and this one doesn't and realize that part of it's in code and part's not yeah um so, so the reason for that you know I, I i really like the events especially for transitions and animations and other things like that so um you know i i think if it's something where i want to play an animation later um, and I just want to kind of be in like game designer mode or, or adding, adding juice or whatever to the, to it. Um, it's, it's going to, uh, be, um, be pretty, you know, it's going to be different, right? Like, uh, uh, I can keep my mind out of code while I'm doing animations and things like that. And so I, I see a number of people joining the discord now. <laughs> um, so so yeah that's that's kind of where it's at um so we're kind of um this is essentially working now uh maybe did, the way that it expect. you try it out did you hit play and, hit, and yeah play? yeah so so it came it, it brought up this uh invite link and um and so you know, people went to invite? that url uh I, i'm already in there so <laughs> that guy out yeah exactly exactly cool so um, one feature down that was the easiest feature ever do you want to just 
are you going to commit that now and do a build or what, what do you do after this or, or what would yeah you yeah process? so um so my normal process right is just to hit head in here um you'll notice that i have like a bunch of other things that had occurred i'm just going to add it all um some of this stuff okay. is automatic like my version text uh, it automatically updates my version every time the code builds in unity okay um and uh and then also there's like kind of a little watermark on uh on the bottom right so that if somebody sends me a screenshot and says something's not working i can tell what happened um okay. so this would exactly be what uh, it was. yeah community button sends uh to um and right now you're committing into Git, right? You're yeah, yeah. So this is the Visual Git Studio commit. Code built in stuff. I'll do a push here as well. Um, but then, uh, you know, in collaborate, I'm not pushing yet uh, because I'm I'm kind of wanting to bat, you know, do a larger batch for uh, what's going to do before you push out a build. Um, you don't want to push out a build with just the community button because there's really not much to test. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And um, part of the reason there's just that delay, right? Because it takes like an hour or whatever for the build. Yeah, to start it's, it. you know, so the, the project, I think uh, the number of art assets in in the repo is something like 10 gigs, even though the game is under two gigs. But um, the uh, the end result is that, um, uh, you know, the upload will be kind of like one single upload. And then when the CI server pulls all the code down to then work on that code, um the uh uh it, it takes an hour or two to do the full build or whatever and get it all ready um but once it's ready then i could publish to steam or whatever so so that's kind of the goal um and then uh you know and then i build on top of that um so yeah cool um okay so so real fast now that we kind of have like a good little checkpoint we can always roll back to it if we wanted to um we are going to, uh, you know, one thing that I wanted to do is just kind of like animate that text. Um, and so, uh, yeah, let's try um, this out. So you're going to make the, the community text animate on the button, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I know how you're going to um, cheat to do this. <laughs> I already know. Cause you, you already told me you yeah, yeah. This just a little while ago and it's really cool. Um, so, okay, okay. So that requires the, the right. TMP text. Yeah. I gotta be on so the right. Select the text mesh pro text object on the button and add the text animator and text animator player. And you don't necessarily need the player, right? You only uh, need that if you want the typewriter form. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which I don't you necessarily need. The animator, right? need. I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll play with it a little bit here. Um, so, so really what I want is kind of like a bounce yep. here. Uh, and uh, so we'll just take a look and see what that looks like. Oh man, the zoom controls are keep getting in my way of the play button. Oh, I love those ones. The ones that pop right, up there, right in the middle of your screen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's check it out. There you go. You got your nice right. bouncy wiggly text there. For bouncy your wiggly text right there. So looking good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's just an asset on the asset store. I, I after you yeah. showed it to me, I went and bought it right away, and I started yeah, plopping yeah. it in everywhere. It was like seven bucks to make all my text do all kinds of funny fancy animations uh, i had to jump on it um yeah it, this this one especially sets people off uh so oh, there's a wow. rainbow bounce i haven't even gone through them all i've used like bounce yeah. and wiggle and it was uh i was like this is neat <laughs> what's going on here i'm gonna start oh wow yeah, there we go oh so wow go. that's better than <laughs> i thought i didn't expect the colors the the texture to animate across them like that yeah, and they actually animation. they have they have hooks in this package that I haven't really used, right? I just try and go as fast as I can, but um, they have plugins to to modify that bounce and all this other junk. Um, so some really cool stuff. I, I I think rainbow is a little bit too much there. I think that's a lot too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the bounce and maybe maybe an outline or something at most or a color difference, but yeah, that looks good. That is pretty cool. And so just like that. And so, yeah, that, that task's complete. Um, and so, you know, from there, I just have my little Kanban board here. So I just wanted to make the community button, you know, and, and put it over you to done. You skipped a column though. Yeah, exactly. That was, <laughs> yeah, it was meant to go in there and now it's over here. How better. Um, that, yeah, that's just kind of a duplicate. I was moving these over this morning to this board. Um, 
Uh, okay, so uh, this is a, a, another thing that I thought would be pretty interesting and, and just something that I've been putting off forever. Um, and it, again, it has to do with the main menu. So I, I can answer questions or something like that if anybody has anything for what we just did uh, before I move on to the next thing. But um, I kind of wanted to make this, uh, you know, the axe here. I, I kind of wanted to change it a little bit so that it's a little bit more dynamic. So when you go and play the game and you get a new weapon, that the new weapon shows up in the main menu um, and uh, maybe rotates and hovers and bounces or something along those lines, just like a little ping pong here. Okay. Um, Are you going to just replace that one or show it in addition, like you're adding them all on as they unlock or what were you thinking? Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's just going to be, it's going to show you the, the, the weapon that you uh, essentially have equipped uh, when you, um, get into the game. And so, um, you know, usually in the game, you get new weapons uh, through dialogue choices. Um, and so, uh, you know, this the, in, in this particular case, um, the first level has the dialogue choice that switches your weapon, um, you know, more or less for the rest of the game. Um, and then there, in a later, later update, then I'll do more, more weapons uh, related to dialogue choices and things like that. But uh, okay. that weapon currently doesn't show up here. And in fact, the weapon that you start with doesn't actually, um, uh, doesn't actually show up uh, in general as well um, on, on that screen uh, also. So, um, you know, coming in here and I'm just gonna kind of skip through a bunch of dialogue here and just to show you what the main weapon looks like or the first weapon looks like. So I pick up the weapon, you'll notice it's a sword, right? Yeah. And so I think the first thing that needs to show up in there is this this sword that's there, um, and uh, and then work from you know that that sword should just kind of be on that main page and kind of in the center there, hovering, rotating, whatever. Um, and then when you get the axe later or or the club, uh, then I, I'd want to then replace that with okay. uh, this other weapon. So with so whatever the it. most recently used weapon was, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Cool. exactly. And do you already have a plan on how you wanted to hook that up and make it work? Um, yeah, I mean, I hadn't really thought about it too much. So, so uh, you know, one of my later tasks, I'm I'm wiring up a Steam Cloud Save later, um, and so right now I just have player preferences uh, that are being used, and so uh, the that's you probably know, fine for this. Yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'll use the player preferences, but then eventually I'm going to need to go and, and walk through all of the player preferences and then save those to a file and then attach that to, to cloud save so that when people uh, uninstall the game or install it on another computer or whatever, uh, they'll just continue to have their same save file. So, yeah. so that's kind of like a later goal, but right now uh, it would just be, um, you know, player prefs, you know, so, so I'm going to go into the dialogue system, I think, and then I would um, modify the player prefs uh, through the dialogue system, through the weapon pickup uh, system. And you then you can also do it when you just give them a weapon, right? Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. Wh wherever that weapon adding is. So if you give them, I don't know if you plan, do you give them weapons through other places than dialogues or? No, right now it's all entirely through dialogue. Oh, okay. um, and so uh, there's kind of, you know, when when the weapon switches and, and, and currently just kind of switches the graphic to make it look a little bit different. And then, um, you know, one of my cards kind of later down the line is to make those weapons feel very different. Oh, okay. um, and so, you know, currently in, in the current flow, you'd have to go back and kind of like replay the first level to, to unlock that weapon and then kind of go back to level select to go and start where you were at before. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so if you didn't like your choice, you can always go back and, and change it by replaying the first level. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, in this way, you know, this is one of the ways that, um, the dialogue choices like have, have meaning in the game is that, uh, you're, you know, based on, uh, the encounter you're about to face, you can switch your weapon based on, uh, the dialogue that, that's in there. Um, and, and there's also some pretty good puns that come out uh, <laughs> as soon as you select your weapon. So, um, so yeah, so, so the system that attaches your weapon uh, or hooks up your weapon is going to need to understand which weapon uh, to use and things like that. So, cool. um, I think we should hook it up. Yeah, yeah. Sounds start, good. start coding it, put it in there and see uh, what that looks like. See kind of what that existing weapon looks like. Somebody was asking, by the way, um, if yeah. you have an art team. 
and I, I know you don't, but if you want to, <laughs> while you're pulling yeah. up your code, just explain how, how you've been managing to get all the art and get, you know, full art for a full game that you're about to release. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've spent very little, uh, money or, or, or time. Like, so all this artwork came from, um, most of this artwork came from BitGem, uh, which is, uh, uh, kind of like they, they, they sell uh, hand painted assets and, and things like that. And so, um, you know, early on I, I said, uh, you know, so, so I have a full-time job that's not game development. And so early on, I just said, I want to be able to spend six hours a week uh, in order to build a game and I want to move as fast as possible. So um, all of this artwork is stuff that's either been purchased off the asset store or pur purchased through BitGem or um, other other locations. And so um, usually through sales and things like that. So, um, you know, I don't I think I've spent maybe uh, less than a thousand dollars kind of like putting everything together as far as you know, it's probably less than $500 actually um, to get all of the artwork and assets in, in here. Um, and, uh, and then, um, you know, a, a lot of it is just like wiring up the animation systems and, and then creating mechanics. So like, you know, I'm, I'm a very te technical person and I really love creating game mechanics. And so um, that's why the mechanic in this game, I feel like is so unique is just because I, I had an idea one day to, you know, say like, let's make a physics-based hack and slash. And, and um, I don't, I haven't seen that uh, too often anywhere. So, um, you know, it, it was just kind of this, this idea of a, a new mechanic and then building mechanics. And, and, and so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I wanted to buy a bunch of artwork that looked like it belonged together. Um, and, uh, and then, um, you know, put together something that is is fun and mechanics driven. Um, and so, so actually, I'll, I'll show real fast here. Um, just speaking of the artwork, um, and so you know, I, I didn't really do a lot of the level design. I, I used uh, Dungeon Architect to do that. So the, the the levels are generated. You can kind of see that from the overhead here. So even though they look kind of you know fairly um, you know unique from closer to the ground level. Um, you can kind of see that Dungeon Architect had designed the entire level, uh, and then I created the waypoints through that. Um, Just kind of pick the spots that you liked and the path that you wanted to use I, through the dungeon I, that it generated. Exactly, you know, exactly. How many dungeons did you have to generate before you found ones that you liked? Is it like one and uh, you get a good was, one or hundreds? Yeah, no. Um, Dungeon Architect was really great because I, I literally, you know, I'd hit the generate button, say, oh, that looks good. I, I accidentally did an extra one. So I actually have, you can see the scene right here where I'm like, well, if I want to add a new level quickly, I already have one generated. Right. Okay. And, um, and so, and, and you can kind of see like, this is like a cemetery setting, um, but none of the, none of the camera effects and you can kind of see that there's no uh, terrain around it or anything like that. But um, what was cool about it was just that, uh, you know, I, I, I hit generate, I'd have like a new scene to work with and then I could keep going. And so um, during those early days where I was uh, uh, more or less creating, um, you know, I was just doing like level after level, uh, I, you know, it, it was really funny because I'd come back uh, to, you know, my group that I get feedback from and they'd be like, you know, it seems like level one took you like five months to make and then levels two through 12 took like maybe like three weeks. Um, <laughs> and, and it was really funny. Yeah. So, so like all I did, you know, in the very beginning was, um, you know, I, Jason, it was you who recommended to me that I, I hand build the first level. And then, yeah. and then after I did that, uh, and you, you can kind of see that the design of, uh, the first level is a little bit more, um, I guess, organic in a way. Um, and, and actually you and I, uh, on a call, I had drawn out on paper, this exact layout. Um, and, uh, that was about a year ago now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then, um, well, and each and so, one of those rooms had a different mechanic, right? Yeah, exactly. So at and each one was to introduce a, a new a new one of your mechanics throughout. This was essentially like your tutorial level, right? Yeah, exactly. And and um and so you know I I I I had spent a significant amount of time building this out, um and then once it was built, then I you know then I was like okay, well I really know what I need Dungeon Architect to do, 
uh, going forward. And so then you kind of get these more um, uniform setups. And so you can kind of see from over here, um, you know, so, so basically changing the configuration on Dungeon Architect uh, fairly consistently allowed me to build levels you know, very quickly. And so something that took me three months to do, um, you know, now started taking me, uh, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> um, and so that was, that was the beauty of Dungeon Architect. It was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to wire up all the art assets. And you can kind of see there's different themes to the levels. Um, you know, uh, there are things kind of on the walls in here. So like this ladder here was placed by Dungeon Architect, right? But the, the, the fence is repeating. And so all of this fo foliage, everything that you can kind of see in this level here has all been positioned and moved around from Dungeon Architect. Um, and then the explosive barrels is the only set of game design uh, that I really did to like make sure that, um, you know, and, and these walls, I, I did flat stones instead of walls that you can't walk through and things like that. So, um, you know, it, it, it's really, it's really con configurable and it allows you to, you know, it allowed me to, to move very quickly. Yeah. Um, That's so pretty I, cool. I really right? like the, just the fact that you get a bunch of levels and you just hit a button and it generates them and fills all that out. And then how, so once you finished building out a level, like how much time did you actually have to spend going through and manually modifying them? Or did you not have to modify them at all outside of just adding in things like the barrels? Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't, you know, so for example, this one here, um, I barely did anything to modify it. Um, you know, I, I think the main thing, uh, the most troublesome level is when I had stairs, the stair assets. Um, yeah. And so this, this level here uh, is, is an interesting example of it. Um, let me find the point where I spent hours just trying to like reconfigure stairs. Okay, so right here. Um, so, so the main thing is, is that I have the nav mesh in here. Um, and so if I actually have, oh God, I can't remember. I think it's under uh, AI now. Window AI. Uh, uh, window and then AI navigation. Thank you. It's so weird. you can kind it's of the see... only thing under AI. I don't know why it's not just called navigation. <laughs> <laughs> it's just under its menu, right? Um, and so uh, you know, the imp, he he walks along all this blue space here. And you can even see here, like these stairs wouldn't actually work, right? Um, oh, but okay. it's it, it's this this is the path that he normally takes. So I, I don't I don't worry about that. But um, the terrain management, because uh, Dungeon Architect will also modify terrain for you and apply te textures to that terrain. So like, this is a much better job than I could have ever done with my programmer art. Oh, okay. um, and, uh, and so you can see all these textures were applied to the cliff sides and then, and then it kind of created plateaus. But you can see that this angle is much more sharp than all the other angles that I had done in the other levels. And that's just because the staircases were not connecting up properly. Um, so I had to do some weird configuration of dungeon architect. So that, that was the worst experience, but like, um, for example, on this level here, um, I, I generated it and then I was like, okay, time to get going. Right. Cause you can kind of see like, there's like kind of walkways through everything. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So literally like five minutes later, I was like building the level and, and, uh, you know, setting up the waypoints. And so. You know the way that the imp works is you know he kind of just goes from place to place and uh all the you can kind of see these box colliders here are they're really dim for, though it's hard guess, it's kind of uh, hard yeah. to see them with the snow but yeah I can, yeah I can see it um here oh, actually gizmos, yeah the nav yes. match yeah exactly <laughs> gizmos. big beautiful gizmos um, there let me click off of that team the inspector kind of kind of see it a little bit but anyway the, the green wireframes here but anyway those are responsible for spawns of enemies and things like that oh, um okay and uh and so, so when know. they go into that room uh, yeah I assume, is it just like a trigger enter or something that's happening uh no so so actually i have this waypoint system and you can kind of see the names of them this is a terrible level to do this on let's do it over here um if it loads the level up. there we oh, go okay. uh so, so you can oh, okay, see yeah, these waypoints right. show up a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> okay. the snow, the snow really is uh, hard to work in because the, all the text is white, right? Yeah, I um, didn't even know there was text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so this is what's cool, right? Like, so you have like the, the story points and the room fights, okay. um, 
And so it's it's a waypoint system. So it's kind of like on rails, right? Because the the main the main uh, piece of the game that I really want people to pay attention to is um, the you know kind of a the physics based combat system and the dialogue choices, right? And so I don't really want um, people kind of like wondering or working about exploration. And I, I have this idea for. Um, you know, maybe in the future, adding asymmetric multiplayer to the game. Um, so somebody can play as the imp and walk around and somebody plays as the sword and they work together to do different things. Um, the imp would solve puzzles and stuff like that. So like, that's kind of like distant feature uh, vision. Um, but but uh, for now, the imp is kind of just controlled by the computer. He has his own AI and, and your responsibility is to protect him uh, for various uh, story driven reasons. Um, like a permanent escort quest, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a permanent <laughs> escort quest, um, and uh, you'll even see like the first. My first level is named escort in the. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I went through a lot of ideas uh, around this, but but the kind of the idea is like this first waypoint here uh, is where he spawns, and then you can kind of walk out and go to the next waypoint, and then there's a hallway fight, right? And. Um, and what's pretty cool about this is, again, I have the Unity events here because all of these are pretty unique. Um, and uh, so it basically says, okay, the escort's gonna wait, uh, enemies are gonna spawn. Um, I'm gonna enable some more Unity events after uh, to make sure that once all the enemies are dead, something else will happen. Um, and, uh, and so all the spawning happens. Um, and then uh, when all the enemies are dead, then the escort will start moving again. Um, and then all the, you know, here's the configurator for the spawn areas and the different, uh, you know, demons that spawn, things like that. So um, you go kind of from waypoint to waypoint and, uh, and you can kind of see the progression in the level and, and where you walk around. And so um, if you wanted to see what that, that looks like uh, from the game point of view. Yeah, let's um, see it real quick and then let's swap out that weapon. Let's, let's do the weapon persistence thing after that. Let's see yeah, kind of a quick preview good. of gameplay so people know what you're talking about, I guess, when, when we talk about uh, grabbing a weapon. Yeah. All that. So you get in there, you so. start talking to this dude and you talk really, really fast. Yeah, sorry. Hey, you, read, uh... you read the dialogue like everybody else does, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh you know so you can kind of see what i'm talking about with the physics based stuff um yeah. and also the exploding barrels are meant to help you uh fight enemies so you can kind of like knock them into enemies and kind of see it, it, it the explosion happens um you go in here and then you know it, it, again it fires off an event to start that guy uh it can blow him up and then there's kind of like a puzzle you can't really move forward here until you uh work through the puzzle so i'll just show everybody the answer so spoiler alert spoiler yeah, exactly. the whole thing. and then uh so then when that happens it kind of plays a chime and then you kind of walk on to the next area right um so so that's a little bit of uh uh how the progression works in the game you kind of go from point to point and and doing those things go around beating up different enemies right and then grabbing new weapons um yeah that right now uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i believe you said the weapons are just visual right Mm -hmm. they don't have any gameplay but, impact yet but that's a, a plan something you're going to add eventually yeah yeah so so the gameplay impact on the weapons um so there's going to be new physics uh, sort of systems and so and um i'm sure that you remember jason from the earlier prototypes i had um i had kind of like nunchucks and things like that like like multi just different ideas yeah, yeah objects spinning around right? and so like having like a whip and uh, other things and so um you know that'll that'll come into the game as things go and so uh fun. you know and i want to do that kind of after the release I, wanna, I have a plan to just kind of you know keep iterating on the game and and just have this you know be be something that i just continuously work on continuously develop and keep adding features to That'd be cool. I um, want to see if you can do the whip in like a six hour sprint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that does. Everybody it. is not familiar. He's been doing this in like six, six hours a week, just two hours at a time. Um, building this thing out for the last year and just about to release the steam. So going through and putting in the last feature. So you want to jump onto that last, um, the sword one or the, the yeah, weapon upgrade? Exactly. Whoa, that was too much light. All right. So, so the, the thing he's going to add in now is right now you can go through and pick up weapons, um, unlock them. It, well, you don't pick them up. You, you unlock them through dialogue, right? You talk to, yeah. talk to the dude and then you say the right thing, you get a specific weapon and now you can make it so that whatever weapon you have last, essentially the last weapon that you've gotten, is the same weapon that you start with again and the weapon that shows up in the UI or just the weapon that shows up in the menu? 
Uh, yeah, so so what I want to do is the weapon that I start with and the weapon that shows up in the menu, in the main menu, uh, should be the last weapon that you acquired. Um, when you go to another level, then then you can use that. And so, uh, you know, there's and if you kind stop and replay, you'll still have that same weapon, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, and right now, it, it, you know, you get that weapon in the very beginning, and then you never see it again after the first level. Um, and so it's just something that I've been, uh, I've been meaning to, to put in and then uh, do more with uh, throughout the game. And so, um, you know, it, it's, I think uh, it sounds fun. So yeah, let's yeah. get started with that and we'll just talk about questions and stuff along the way too. Yeah, yeah. If anybody has any questions, for sure, I can I can talk about that. Too. They're definitely questions, um, but I think they're 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 definitely bigger than bigger than this about how, how you structure <laughs> things and stuff. But I don't want to get too distracted, so we'll jump over to those in a little bit on just like general project structure and architecture stuff. So if you want to see those, um, just hang around for a little while and we'll jump on that stuff in just a few. To go yeah, through um, great. some adding another feature. I feel like we we went like half an hour without adding any new commits. So knock something out real quick. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have this, um, uh, you know, kind of the weapon choice, so the dialogue weapon choice right here. Okay. Um, and so uh, this this thing is in inside the dialogue manager. Um, and that's a waypoint, right? I, I saw it had a waypoint component on it. Yeah, exactly. So you so, get into so that waypoint. Yeah, you get into that waypoint, and then uh, it it kicks off a dialogue, um, and then that's just before this next encounter here. And so that dialogue, then you have a conversation. You go back and forth between the skull and the imp, and uh, and you know, one inside that that dialogue, then the dialogue net manager is now kind of responsible for uh, kicking off transitions of uh to different weapons and things like that okay um, so when the dialogue pops up it looks like you got three objects that appear that you have a select weapon club sword and axe down there underneath yeah exactly the yeah so are right those here. just objects that they're clicking on then to do their selection uh no so in the dialogue so let me show the inky script because i think that will okay. be uh a good a good way to go so um the way that we do uh the dialogue is through uh inkle or ink inky I, I can't uh, remember. so this is a language based on uh being able to do dialogues right and so you can kind of see dialogues for the the entire um system and so uh the um the main thing is let me see so i need to be in the escort uh file and then um we would be able to see the select weapon encounter, weapon choice right here. Okay, so you've got a weapon um, choice section. This is like a chapter of your dialogue that you're just jumping to, right? Yeah, So exactly. they walk in and then the dialogue system runs through this, it says jump to the weapon choice and then asks for what to do. And then you just kind of respond to that, right? I have used this a little bit in Unity. It's really simple to set up. Um, you basically write out the stuff, tell it to play the story and it will play the story they can yeah. click on things and it, it's pretty pretty easy to get working with though and, and you can see my text animations that happen inside uh the dialogue and and things along those lines so um okay. and we I, I can play through this to kind of get get us to the, this point but this uh select weapon sword these tags will end up running code that code would then attach the appropriate weapon to it um, okay. And so I think the very first piece is just to, uh, you know, essentially make sure that we capture which weapon we selected and then, uh, you know, kind of use that later down the line. Well, so, how does your weapon selection code work? I guess so we take, should we take a look at that? Yep. I like say so you call up. select weapon axe and you just go search through your code or whatever. Or you yeah. So, so we have this dialogue it. weapon manager. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how this works. Yeah. And this so, works. um, you know, basically, I have the dialogue manager, and that's um, that's essentially there's a a bunch of code that um, that Inky has uh, on their website that kind of shows about uh, you know how to attach to events and things like that. Or, or I guess I added the events afterwards. So this script right here just says you know whenever I'm processing a tag, which is uh, you know when you get to that dialogue point and it starts running through the different tags that are in that dialogue point. Um, you know, then I just say, okay, well, if it doesn't start with select weapon, just move on. But if it does, then we're going to go in here and, uh, you know, so, so this is not great, right. Find objects of type. Right. Uh, You're just going to find all of the weapon pickups 
and then match. Yeah, it's yeah. probably fine. You're doing this once, like in a level, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a one time thing that happens off of the dialogue choice. Yeah. So, what it does, and then we just do a weapon dot pick up weapon. And okay. um, so that might weapon... be where you'd want to put your, your code of which one you picked up, right? Yeah, exactly. Your pick up weapon. And so, like be before this stream, I did not look at any of this code. I just said, "Oh, I need to do this." So okay. now I'm just trying to. <laughs> no, that makes sense. So it, somewhere in your pickup weapon, you probably just want to cash off um, what that weapon was, and then in your start or going into your menu, you want to read that and make that the main weapon, right? Yeah, and, 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 and pick up weapon on it, or however you pick up the weapon. How do you actually set a weapon across levels, though? Yeah, well, I don't right now. Ah, okay, because your and weapons so, only exist in that scene. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Exactly. Okay. So, so it is. It is a kind of an involved uh, task, but also I wrote this code, you know, at the very beginning of the project. So this can be you, your you, oldest and ugliest. Yeah, code. this is my yeah. oldest and ugliest code, and probably a lot of it is prototype code as well. So just yeah. just to, um, you know. like I said, it's only visuals right now, and it only happens two times in the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so we can re refactor this a little bit for uh just sanity's sake um and uh that'll help us a little bit too uh so um well how are you gonna manage your your weapons and if you're not gonna oh because you still want to show them visually in the scene right yes exactly so so uh there there really is no maybe weapon management in there right now. So we need to kind of build a system to at least name the assets appropriately so that I know what to go grab. Uh, or just reference and reference the assets as prefabs or something. Yeah, exactly. Right, you just make a weapon manager that references your three prefabs and then swaps to the, the correct one by name or key or something. Yeah. Just yeah. instantiates that sucker. So, yeah. Um, so, so this pickup weapon code, uh, I'm just going to do a quick refactoring by getting these two lines off, you know, getting these off onto two lines um, okay. rather. Uh, so this is a weapon mount. Um, and yeah. So you're instantiating a weapon mount. What is that in this game? uh this is uh, so so if it can't find it then it's going to uh, attach it to one that uh a new one and the weapon mount is um uh essentially a prefab of kind of the player the main player control in here so it's just saying okay because because i think early in the level we also use the system to attach the first weapon that you start with um yeah. Okay. And uh, so essentially your players input in their controls. Yeah, you're exactly. creating the object that has their weapon underneath it, setting that up. And then you have to assign a weapon to it. So then you set current weapon. And that's probably the actual part where you'd cash it off, right? Is the current weapon. Yeah. Inside and then the there's also these mount. on pickup events, right? So like each weapon can fire off events when it's picked up. And yeah. so, um, you know, if you wanted to play an animation to like show it kind of spin in the air uh, before it attaches or whatever, um, then we'd be able to see that here. So oh, okay. um, yeah, so these are the pickup events as well. So it kind of plays plays the audio. It looks like you've and... got an invalid one at the end of that too. Yeah, yeah. I think all of these had a really an old one that um, yeah didn't didn't need to be there anymore. Cool. So you want um, to make your weapon manager or whatever you're gonna make it. What are you gonna? What would you call your script, or whatever your system is gonna be? Yeah. So uh, thinking about it a little bit right now, um, and let's see. So, so in here, I mean, does do... it even need a weapon manager? Or can it just work on your your other script? Your, your yeah, prefab. It, it, it really could just be off of this prefab, right? Because um, in in reality, so let's go take a look at the prefab of this thing. Um, so it has the art art asset. Uh, it's the spike, the spiked club prefab. And let's take a look at that inside of the project. If I can select it in my hierarchy, um, select. Okay. Um, yeah, none check. <laughs> so you yep. kind of see some concept nice. concept weapons in there uh, that that are not not quite um, in in there, right? Okay, so. 
um, the spiked club. Like for example, if I select the spike club, I don't want that to show up in, in the main um, menu. So, uh, you know, for now, um, yeah, it, it would probably be a weapon manager. And then this thing might have, might, might be connected up to a weapon manager and that weapon manager then would allow me to, um, you know, uh, basically set in memory what I'm going to use. So we can go ahead and start with that. Um, and we'll just say weapon manager. All right, so making a new class and then you move that into its own file. And this one's going to keep track of basically what the last weapon picked up was so that oh, you can whoops, show it in on. the menu and then use that weapon again um, when they go to the next level or when they restart, right? So you'll be able to keep your weapon across gameplays. So I did a rename instead of a... Instead of an extract and move? Yeah, so oh. that, that, that screwed me up a little bit. That, that will um, definitely mess you up. Why is that? Not, right. Oh, okay. you already have the other file there? there you go. Yeah, okay. it, was, it really made things wonky, but that's okay. We're good, we're good, we're good. Um, All right, so this is going to, what, register for a weapon pickup uh, on pickup event? Yeah, so, so probably uh, we'd want one of these things in here. Um, and uh, we would just say something like weapon manager, and then so so we want to attach that in here, and then um, kind of programming by intention. Wait, when we why say, do you you want those weapon pickups to be referencing the manager? Uh, yeah. So rather than trying to find the manager in the scene, uh, you know, pre-wire them up and. Um, but and do you want a manager for every scene or are you going to have just one? Uh, the manager, uh, it, it'll just be one, right? It, it, there'll just be one weapon manager in the manager's prefab um, that goes across scenes. Okay, so are these all going to um, be prefab objects then, or project objects? Uh, yeah, yeah. So okay. let me see here. We probably need to have a reference to the weapon in every single scene from now on. So um, these these prefabs, there will probably be these sorts of prefabs existing inside the weapon manager, kind of off off screen. I'm thinking. Okay. Um, and so I have this like managers object that is available to every single scene. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, and then you're you know, gonna put those as children underneath that. Yeah, I, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Okay. It doesn't have to go that way. We can. No, that's fine. I was just curious. But, I just make sure I understand. Yeah. Um, where you're headed with it so if people have questions or i have questions i, I can get i don't yeah, want to yeah, change absolutely. the way you're doing it your shit's been working and yeah, the game's almost <laughs> ready like, i have no intention of telling you to do anything different i just want to watch and uh yeah. observe well and i i'm open to feedback too so it's it's good i just want to uh, uh you know, unless you do something no terribly way. bad um <laughs> yeah exactly please tell uh, me if i'm doing something i don't want to lead you bad. down any rabbit hole so because like, i have a lot of anxiety about the find out object of type and i'm going to come back and oh, fix that yeah, i wouldn't worry about that it's <laughs> uh, find object type is not going to be a big deal if you're not doing it that often and your con your hierarchy is not here and, yeah. i mean you're never doing it that often yeah yeah, I could, well, if I do, then my frame rate drops like crazy. So. Yeah. Um, You'll know if it's a problem right away. You got a profiler yeah. in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so in the weapon manager, so there's nothing on here right now, but uh, kind of what I want to um, do uh, is, uh, you know, more or less I'm going to, you know, as it fires all of this stuff um, off, I will probably just say uh, weapon manager dot um, and uh, set active weapon. Okay. So it's um, set it to this. And or... yeah, so, so it might be based off of, because um, I don't know if I'm going to have the prefab available. So it might need to be the name of the weapon, um, to be honest, because uh, yeah, so so the currently the inky script references these weapons by name, like the select yeah. weapon club, select weapon sword, select weapon, weapon axe. So I probably want this name, and then I want to rename my prefabs to match these as well. Okay. Um, that will, uh, you know, it, it might be better to have it as like static object types, um, but I think for now I'm just going to use the game object's that. name. 
Um, and you're doing this you know, once a game almost. when you pick a thing up. Yeah, exactly. So so maybe we're going to just pass in the name of the game object at the time. Yep. Um, that will then set it to active. We'll register that with the prefabs and um, and then you know we'll do that. So the player prefs mean? Uh, yeah, pre player prefs. And then um, and then eventually then I'm going to replace all the player prefs car calls yeah. with some sort of memory system so the that I can Steam cloud Steam. saves or whatever other remote saves you use, right? That is the goal. Yeah, and someone's um, asking if this is the architecture I would use. Um, I have no idea. I mean, I haven't gone through <laughs> enough to really know um, or built this specific type of game. Um, I'm sure I'd yeah. probably do a lot of things similar and some things a little different, but that's always going to be the case. Um, but in general, Chris has pretty good code. So I, I say usually I, I like most of his stuff, almost all of it. They start writing in Python and I can't read it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh so i think i have a constant somewhere here constants oh prep 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 constants i think is what it's called oh okay uh and then um so this is going to be selected weapon and then maybe uh name um so so that'll at least just say let's you know so, so the idea would be um in the weapon manager, we're going to fire off the select weapon uh, based off of the um, the name of the pref the preference that we would use, um, the and then that way it'll match up with the dialogue system, which is also using these tags to to reference them by name. So, the name's important. Um, it's kind of weird that you know manages Unity's managing most of this stuff rather than uh, classes are uh, are. Because um, I guess the other option would be to um, make a script that's called club, right? Or weapon club or something like that. And that club would then um, be used to uh, to reference it. But you'd still have to find an object of type or something. Or you could reference the, uh, like a scriptable object or something or a, a, a prefab or something. It would probably be a better way than making a separate class for each one of those two. Assuming that they don't yeah. do any different behavior and you're just using the class as kind of a tag, making yeah. scriptable objects or something work. But I think that this works too, because I mean, really all you're doing here is setting up a way that you can have some design data and your design data shouldn't usually be in code. So I think that, that if name is the best thing you've got um, available, then use it. Like you've got, yeah, the, yeah. That when, you, when you have a million things and you're using the name, it's a nightmare or even a hundred, yeah. but when you've got three or five, like, <laughs> like, yeah yeah exactly it's, anything so, else is just going to make it more complicated yeah and, and also we need to we need to save this as a string in the player prefs anyway unless we had like an id that's an integer so yeah it, you would it have to cash sense. it off as something else anyway and then map it back yeah the object, so i think just using the name is is probably the simplest generally I, the thing i don't like using the name for is like uh just random game objects that I'm referencing in the scene, but these are not random objects like UI named objects and stuff. Those are the ones that get renamed and people mess with and it gets to be a nightmare. But like, you're not going to go in and rename your weapons that have a naming structure accidentally. Mm -hmm. Or you might rename the close button to button close and not think about it really, really that you just broke all your code or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so we should be able to see that, you know, test this real fast by saying, um, weapon tag here right yep so that would just print it out um and then we should be able to see that pretty fast uh that would happen inside the weapon manager so we got to wire up that weapon manager um, and then were you just going to do like when that weapon manager enables you're gonna turn on the other one or at some point in the game you're gonna do it or yeah I, I don't know exactly what you're, what you're so, so like. um if you remember the very first waypoint you have a dialogue fire before you pick up a weapon yeah um and so we're going to need to insert ourselves into that process. Um, and so uh, that's that's likely where we're going to look next. But a few things that we need to do is um, in this prefab of managers, we're going to have to put in a weapon manager um, as well. And add a weapon manager script. Well, it just popped off the other screen. Uh -oh. That's weird. Oh, uh, you put an S in your weapon. There you go. Pluralized it, ruined the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
uh, and then <clears throat> so we have that at least uh, that thing then will need to be tacked on to all of these. Um, okay. You select them all and then drag well. it in. Yep. Weapon manager. Um, okay. And then I kind of want this to be able to be, you know, so this fix stuff button uh -huh. um, <laughs> is very uh, descriptive. Yeah, exactly. Fix stuff is any of these like missing references. I want to go back out and then grab them and then drop them into the invalidated object. Oh, okay. Um, so is, uh, is then, this basically like your version of on validate? Uh, it, it's so on validate. So I want to um, invalidate the game object. Uh, and I can't remember exactly how to do that, but, uh, or no, it's the prefab object I need to invalidate. But basically what I want is the Unity editor. I don't wanna to have to go and click and drag stuff into, into place all the time. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I want to have it, uh, I want the scene to be invalidated so that I can, um, I can wire up these components. And so, you know, just, just like the music manager here, which uh, I'm gonna go and find the, uh, weapon manager and wire it up and uh, and then that way I don't have to like go clicking and dragging everywhere and and trying to find over that fi find all that stuff um, yeah this also says the method. yeah I just normally do it in the on validate method so that I don't have to pick a button I guess yeah. if you want control over it it makes sense um, yeah yeah so so on the invalidate object I'd have to uh, um, or sorry, sorry. On the on validate, I would need to determine whether or not to invalidate the scene, right? Uh, um, I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure why why you're doing that. I normally just look and see if the the references are null, and then just try to find them if they are. It won't save your scene. Then it won't save it to the scene. Then. Um, oh no! It'll save when you save your scene, though. I have a habit of constantly hitting Control S, so it's never been an issue. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I think it disappears. But no, anyways, it'll, it'll save it. off. If, if you do it in on validate and then you click on the object and click off of it again and save it or even do a build or anything, it'll run that validate on it. We can try it. Uh, uh, but you probably don't want to return, right? You want to just do if they're null, then find them because you got multiple. Yeah. yeah. Actually... Uh, if it's null. Oh, yeah. That's probably why the other one wasn't working. Oh, yeah. Right. If it was null, bounce. <laughs> nope. You're right. Oh. You're right. Then, yeah, if this one's null. I mean, and a lot of time, I'll just do like a find object type on it because I'm much lazier with my hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. Find. Yeah. Really nice. uh, and then this would be slash manager slash music or not music, probably manager. Yeah, can't spell today. All good. Uh, I can never spell. Get that weapon manager. There you go. Uh, uh, and if it's null, you just log it out. Could not find the weapon manager. All right, let's see. Are you going to switch this to an on validate real quick and try it out? Yeah. If that uh, does what you expect it to do. It should also do the validate on play. So as soon as you hit play, if it's not filled in, it should fill it in. Like that. I still think we have to invalidate the scene because I, I think it, it doesn't. Okay. So in here, let's see here. Yeah, just hit play. Hit play. Oh, you have compiler errors. Quite unfortunate. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't see past the presentation mode. <laughs> I should I should be scrolling it around. <clears throat> All right. And oh, there you go. You got your manager. music manager. Yeah, is in there. Okay, so but if I like move away from this, I guess if I save right now. Well, now it's going to just find them. But whenever you there. save or do a build, um, which is also when you run, it runs that on validate on all of them. 
Oh, when you do a build? Okay. When you do a build yes, or the build, save. The build should... Yeah, so the build will do it or hitting play will do it. All right. It, it'll run that. that. And then good. you just have to save your scene after that. Okay, so each of these weapons have these things wired up. Yep. Um, this weapon manager now... Okay, so, so let's play through the game and see that our print um, shows up. Make sure that you're saving off your thing and then well, add in the code to see if you can resume and see your new weapon, right? Yeah. You start exactly. off with the the little sword, the default weapon, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, uh you know, I'm run around. Kill some bad guys. Oh, look at chat real quick while you kill some bad guys too. Yeah. If there were any questions here. Do you use dependency injection in your projects? Um not in my Unity projects. So I I mean I would say I don't use yeah. a dependency injection framework in my Unity projects. I, I've tried a couple times, but I've realized that I feel like the scenes and prefabs are kind of um, as much of an injection as I need. Uh, and the other systems get, if it feels a little too opinionated and makes me build a, in different ways than um, than Unity like. So I, I don't use them for everything, but I think there are some games where it makes a lot of sense. All right, so you're going through, you're killing things. Well, how much? How many rooms do you have until you get to the bad guy or the level? It's like three, this? three rooms. Three so rooms, I got one, right. so one more fight guys. to do. Yeah. Oh, then you have to show off the puzzle again, though. I'm gonna spoil yeah. it. <laughs> Ruin the puzzle for everybody. Oh man, and the game is called uh, Skulls, Impossible Skulls Impossible Quest. Quest. I was starting it with imp in my head constantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because cool. it's it's and, and it's a pun on imp possible because you know he's he's obviously the imp that you're protecting. Um, it's Chris's dad jokes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's right. plenty of puns right. in the dialogue too, so look forward to that. That's good stuff. <laughs> um, so, so here we go. We're about yeah. to pop into weapon selection. Get to choose your favorite weapon. If everybody, yeah. any wait, don't pick a weapon yet. Should we let everybody pick what weapon you want? They want you to pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Please. So, what are, what are the choices? Let's show them the choices, and then we'll just let chat. Uh, so, so he, for fun. he said, you know, so the imp said just said, uh, you know, I, I here's my weapon shop, and he said, and so the skull says back to him, I didn't know you were an expert in cutting edge technology, and, uh, and he <laughs> says, take, <laughs> take your pick. Uh, if we find if we find a rune later, we can uh, give them special abilities. Um, and then, so it's a sword, an axe, or a spiked club. So right. the sword just keeps your weapon the same. Uh, yeah, so pick an axe or a spiked club, everybody, in chat. Just whichever one you guys want. <laughs> so far, I see a couple votes for club, but give everybody, like, 20 seconds to, to pick which one they want. And right now, they, they act the same, right? It's just visually different, and then yeah, adding in different. some functional differences pretty soon. Yeah. So chat is extremely active with, like, four people there. <laughs> 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 no, i'm kidding i'm sure people will start yeah. chatting in there in a second it looks like um oh man it's getting even now oh the axe is in the lead the bat the gun did you put a gun in there no no gun yet sorry yeah, okay. <laughs> all right so it looks like the axe is slightly i don't know man this is why i needed my voting thing set up and working yeah um yeah i don't know <laughs> Which one? What is it? What is Club it? Axe. Oh, Come on. <laughs> Club Axe. Uh, let's go. So, so you saw the the axe in the main menu. Uh, so okay, we'll take the club. The plug. Yeah. There, it was too even. It, it was wasn't wasn't said enough. Oh, axe one, so, and then we pick the club. Ah. Yeah. So so uh, <laughs> we could do we, the we, axe. We, we we picked the club. It says like, I expect we'll take this opportunity to go out clubbing. So you know. Okay. Just, uh, now you have to pick yeah. the axe because everybody yeah. voted, buddy voted axe right after. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the second you hit club. Excellent the choice. Axe fly up the screen. Well, well, I, I think we're gonna, we're gonna need to anyway. Well, we we just saved it to the preferences so we could adjust the main menu next. But, okay, um, and that happened yeah. in the log, right? So we got the console log showing that you save it off. Picking yeah, the club. Right there. Yep, there you go. Weapon club is selected. And now it's just a matter of making that matter, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we have it saved off and you can ha have have that there or whatever. So I'll go, stop to go whack right stuff now. with that club. All right. Yep. And <laughs> let me get the zoom menu out of the way again. Ah, there we go. <laughs> um, okay, so we have that stuff. Uh we're we're saving that off. We know which weapon we had selected. Um, I yeah, think it's the one all thing in your weapons I, manager, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I think one thing I want to do is rename my prefabs to match the names in here. Oh, um, okay. Just because I, I think that that will help us uh, when we're reusing them everywhere else. Um, yeah. So we're going to drop that. I'm going to select that in the hierarchy. Uh, whoops. We want the other name here. Change the sword to match its name. And these names are the ones that match in the chat for when we, or the, like the dialogue, the dialogue system, system. for yeah. selecting a weapon. So you select them and it uses these tags that match those logs that out or writes that out into player prefs and then when we reload you can go um just pick back up that weapon and reapply that weapon yeah exactly so so we can kind of uh, at least hopefully see that happening on the main menu so now we can actually do some um you know maybe more interesting stuff with it right um, yeah Let's just jump over to the main menu. All right. So in the menu, for anybody, uh, you don't have the pretty menu showing. I feel like that should just be yeah. showing all the time, right? The menu shows <laughs> the uh, the weapon that he's got, um, which right now is actually shows the wrong one, right? It just shows the app. <laughs> the goal here is yeah. we're going to make it so that the, it shows whatever that last weapon picked up was. So now it should show the club there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's the goal. Right the now we just have the axe and yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the, the, the particles from uh, another effects pack uh, that I really like. Um, let me see Particle what they effects were. feel like cheating when you're making video games. Like yeah, how exactly. How you make them go from like boring to beautiful. Good crypto FX has, has some really great particle effects. And, and uh, so that's where all that comes from. But yes, it okay. does. It, and emission, emission, screen shake, particle effects, I mean, you yeah. just make things feel juicy, right? Yeah, uh, text that. animation that's on your UI. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, actually, I'm going to commit my code real fast because we okay. did quite a, quite a bit of good stuff. Um, Jump over to yeah, Visual just, Studio Visual Code Studio. and commit them into Git first. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, so this is all just kind of like editor stuff, so that all looks right. Um, so this okay. is uh, selecting a weapon is now recorded in player press. Uh, good. Gonna push that. And As somebody um, was asking uh, how long you've been using learning Unity. Um, for me, I don't know. It's been like ten years or some somewhere around there. How about you, Chris? How long have you been doing Unity? Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think I talked about this on our on the interview that we did. But uh, um, I think yeah, about maybe seven to ten years ago, uh, I. I picked up Unity. Um, actually, we can probably look up the exact date because I picked up Unity as soon as they announced that they would allow you to release to Android and iOS for free. So oh, okay. uh, before that, I made a couple games. Um, you know, I made my first game and it was just like 2D graphics, really simple. It wasn't even a game. It was just like a sound generator that used a canvas to uh, animate stuff. And then, and then I started making my own game uh, kind of like... Uh, Kind of a game engine with the renderer um and then and then uh, i realized like i don't want to spend all the time doing that stuff so then i picked up unity as soon as they said you know cross-platform development between android and ios because i have a number of android and ios games um and uh, that i made ages ago uh but this game is by far the highest fidelity so so definitely like if you're just starting out you want to start smaller than this for sure yeah um but, well, yeah, this is definitely not our first game, right? Like, we've got quite a few systems, a bunch of levels, physics stuff, lots of art, all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a lot going on here. But yeah, I've, I've I've slowly learned Unity over like you know the last ten years. But you don't do it full time either, right? Like you, your no, Unity yeah, development is a side thing that you just do for fun on the side. And but you are a programmer, software developer as your full time yeah. job too. So it does kind of relate. You code all the yeah. time normally, so. Make, definitely I, makes been it writing, easier to code at night. Right? Yeah, I've been writing C sharp code, uh, you know, for almost twenty years now. Yeah. So like, <laughs> it makes it makes um, it easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so it does. Yeah, um, understanding mono behaviors and things like that's a little weird, but uh, you know, if you already know C sharp, then jumping into unity is a lot easier now so if, if you already know any started, programming it's it's pretty easy yeah yeah if you know python you can go into c sharp pretty easily um but um yeah it, it's you know you just kind of want to step forward in that in that regard 
Uh, okay, so we got some managers in here, but it's not the same set of managers. So we will need to, uh, we'll probably just re recreate this, probably not use a, re a prefab for it. Um, Are you gonna recreate the weapon manager? Yeah, in, in this sense, because I don't know if we're gonna use the same one or not across the scenes. So um, uh, I'll probably make that choice later uh, because then I'd have to have a, sep a second prefab and then one prefab referencing the other one. Um, so right now I'm just going to make them independent, uh, and then I can, I'll refactor it later if they become, uh, sure. dependent on each other. Um, or, that's something or I always try to push thing. people towards too, is like, keep it simple at first and don't like delay those decisions. Yeah. yeah don't, yeah, don't exactly. make the decisions early and lock yourself into something just because you thought maybe it would be a good idea. It's really easy to do. I, I had a habit of doing that a long time ago. Like I yeah. think I would do all the time where I just like decide something and code for that. Like not really thinking about whether or not that was the best thing to do or if I could yeah. just change it. So try to keep it simple and, and then make the decisions later. So, so all three weapons are just going to kind of be off camera here okay. uh, uh, just for fun. Um, so the scene will load, it'll have everything in there and then we can just like pop in the right one. Um, so obviously this game object right now uh, would, you know, is not going to be what we want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unpack the prefab. Um, let's see, prefab. Oh, okay, because it's actually an axe prefab. And then you just gonna yeah. use that transform position, or what's your plan there? Yeah, my plan. So I'm going to use that transform. I also think that the um, the scale is, and rotation is probably what we want as well, because um, the the child of this ends up because you know it gets yeah. it gets uh, childed to that and then right. and okay then so if you just down. keep that as like a weapon placement object or even just a weapon placement transform yeah. that you could reference on your weapon manager yeah um so yeah this would be like the weapon uh display position right or yeah whatever you want it, to call it. this is just the the uh, the place that we're going to just like display it you're going to make um, the weapon a child of that thing essentially exactly exactly okay. and uh and maybe inherit from the parents um set of stuff so uh i'm just going to leave that there just for placeholderness for now um and we would uh yeah so so the weapon manager um so that thing is probably going to have a uh, something that references the weapon manager in order to uh, maybe go and request the prefab that it wants to have in that position. Um, so maybe we'll create another script called, uh, for for just having like a weapon display. Um, maybe men, main menu weapon display or something like that. Okay. Um, would be just a have good it thing look to do. At weapon manager's current yeah. weapon and just show whatever that is. Yeah, main okay. menu display. Um, that makes and... sense. Keep the the menu crap out of your weapon manager. Exactly. So we can delete this uh, print tag here. Um, and so in here, let's think about this. So we're probably going to do a, um, a weapon manager here, right? Yeah. And then... Reference it right there. And then uh, I don't think grab it in your on validate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We can go and uh, oh, maybe I should create a little utility for this. I didn't really think about it until now, but um, this is just code that I have kind of spread out everywhere. So this probably should be something where I can call it from every on validate. Um, and we don't have a music manager, so we're going to delete that out. Um, write a note to refactor did that did you cut that out of the other file or copy it oh uh, that's a good question i think i cut it yeah <laughs> oh no no it's not this file is it this file it's this one no yeah i was just copy oh okay hey you moved so fast it looked like you cut it out excuse me yeah no, i gotta i gotta find out what i did wrong here god i think i just destroyed Code that I have. Let's revert some stuff. Hang on. Uh, so I like that. Uh, that's just formatting. Um, oh, this thing went from weapon pickup to weapon manager. Oh, did you accidentally rename something? Yeah. Oh. I'm just, sorry, I just changed. So I don't know what I changed there. Okay. Um, this button doesn't need to be in here either. 
Uh, okay, I think we're okay. All right. Uh, let's close all this stuff. Actually, let's close all and then. Um, the heck? I don't know. You're hitting Control P over and over. Control N. Okay, so there we go. Weapon. <laughs> just watching it pop up. Control P. Control P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing myself with the JetBrains shortcuts. Um, yeah. Player weapon disable. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted. Um, you want the display dialog, the weapon display thing. Weapon display. There it is. Main weapon menu. Weapon main menu display. So in this, you're caching the weapon manager, and then in whatever your update or whatever other method yeah. you want to grab the web. Actually, you probably just want to get it right at the beginning, huh? Yeah. Because you're going to load this. Um... Oh, you're going to load it in here? Uh, I just need to grab the last selected weapon, and then I need to switch the prefab that's being displayed in the main menu to that last selected weapon. OK. And so I think that that's probably all we want. Um, constants dot, and then selected weapon, comma, and then um, we need a default value in here. And so that default value is probably, I don't know if I want that to be configurable or not, but we need it to just be like select weapon sort, I think. Yeah. Cause that's gonna be that. the original story. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, that'll pull that value. Um, yep. And actually let's just do this instead. Um, I want this to be. Default weapon well, constant. Yeah. That makes sense. You're just making some constants here. So you get a way to keep track of the name um, and rename it in one spot. And well, really the biggest benefit here is just having all of them visible in one spot now, because even renaming is pretty easy across project. But this, this is definitely nice for just being able to see what those values are and what those keys are all in one clean, easy place. Yeah. OK, so that's the selected weapon. Okay. Um, so uh, literally, we could just loop through the transforms that are attached to this object. Oh, yeah. I actually attached to the weapon manager. So we loop over the transforms to the weapon manager, or we could just get it and then attach it to its own location. So that's probably what I want more. Um, so weapon manager got get weapon, right? Yep. And then selected weapon, and then. Uh, um, and equals that, and then we just say weapon dot transform. Oops. Uh, yeah, dot transform. Oh, yeah. You just don't you don't have a uh, a reference to it. Yeah, it's gonna be lowercase. And then um, b dot set or position equals or set position and rotation. I don't uh, know yeah, I want position and rotation. Is there? Why don't you just make weapon or? into weapon? Just classify it as weapon or whatever it is, and you'll get your auto complete. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, don't I don't know, know what your weapon here. class is. Yeah, is I think it's called a weapon pickup in this case. Oh, okay. And dot, and then um, you want to set the position and rotation, I think. Yeah, so I, I could just do or you set the position, parent. right? Do you equals. actually do? Do you just want to parent it? Because is that thing rotating or something? Yeah, it's not rotating yet, but that'll be good. I'm just I'm just thinking that if I set the parent, does it doesn't change the the location? That's optional. It's a boolean uh, parameter on okay. set parent. All right, set parent, and then uh, so this would be um, transform, comma, and then world position stays false. All right, so that'll just yeah. teleport us over to the right spot. That will. I think it's going to scale your object, though. So you'll want to set the local scale to vector 3.1 after that. Because it's going to scale, because that thing is scaled down, it's going to scale it up to match the size. Okay. Uh, your transform was scaled, right? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it, it will and scale so... that, that parent or the child so that the scale stays the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my new scale will be the parent scale, and then we want to set it back to one so that it refer it actually shows up as the parent scale, or it'll be the inverse of the parent scale. 
Okay, cool. Uh, so go get the weapon. So let's talk about what that means. Um, so we just say if the name is the same as the current transform uh, for each. Uh, weapons or oh, okay. um, tran you're losing the transform children yeah so i think that'll do it I iterating over the transform i think it gives me the trans the children okay. um it, and then just if weapon dot name oh it doesn't even know it's a game object so object, uh dot name equals selected weapon then return weapon Something like that. Um, uh, wrong oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just going to make it. I'm not going to worry about it being a weapon pickup. Uh, oh, maybe it doesn't like it being a game object there. Are you sure it's a transform and not a... Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, I've lost it. I mean, it could be a transform. Oh, wait, if you don't have a default. If you, if you, yeah, if you don't right. return something in your loop. I think that's what your error is. Um, or the first transform child or something. Actually, it should be. Uh, weapon. Oh, you're gonna add in the weapon name too to that exception. Yeah, should probably you can do that. See it. If if it ever happens, you at least know uh, what the weapon was. This is the yeah. So this should be interpolation now. Yeah. Interpolation is now available, right? Hopefully. Yeah, it works. With Rider, it just automatically adds it to. It's nice. You start putting in the little uh, squiggly braces, and you get it automatically. It gets a dollar nice. sign right at the beginning. So. Okay. I'll probably try that out, right? Think. Okay, so this is going to be uh, in main menu. Oh, it thinks that we have some problems here. Yeah. yeah, I would generally agree with not throwing exceptions, but in this case, I think that it's um, going to be totally fine. It's, it's not something that's going to fire off regularly, and it's definitely not a um, an exception that you would expect to get back, right? Like, if it were something coming back from a web request where, like, you would actually expect this thing to happen, I wouldn't want to throw an exception because of performance. But here, yeah, it's if that thing doesn't work, like, you've definitely screwed up the entire deployment, and you're, and you're just making a log entry, really. And it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, you want to know... Uh... Yeah, you want to know that it happened. Um, in main menu display. I want the editor to pause if that is the case, right? Like that's yeah. the the main piece. Um, and you should never get to the point where that's that that's happening in production, right? Yeah. Okay. So Some this would be will, this piece right here. Weapon main menu display. Okay, so that's, so that's the object up. right there in the main menu scene where the axe is. That's the parent, and the plan is yeah. now to just move the weapon child that they've selected, which should be our club, right to that position, and it should just work, right? You hit play, and we should see the Hopefully, club there. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't work at all. doesn't work. But oh, you do have an exception. Your specified cast is not valid. Probably, yeah. what was it? Oh, is it that those are transforms and not game objects? Yeah, maybe calling it a transform would That's... be good. And then, and then you have to do. Game well, actually, this does it have a name? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I never iterate over transforms, so. Yeah, this is kind of something I learned a little while back, and it, it's kind of weird because iterating on the transform is kind of a strange thing. But yeah, and they just overridden it. Definitely not something I, I usually do, but um. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Yeah, it's it's really strange that there's an iterator on there, right? Yeah. It seems like they just add add stuff in a lot of places to make things easier. <laughs> yeah. Like shit you wouldn't true. expect. Shortcuts or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's our club. Look at that. Looking good. So I think the uh, rotation might need to change. 
it's, yeah. it's in its correct rotation. Like up is up. It looks like, or are you in? Yeah, you're in local view. So yes. it's rotated right, but you need to rotate it 90 degrees, right? I mean, that's really strange. Oh, you know why? Oh, this this is so. It is it, the weapon select is being rotated 90 degrees already because the actual model is in game. Like that. Can't you just rotate that parent and call it good? Just rotate your weapon display position since they're all going to be flipped like that anyway. Yes, that is true. And then you don't have to do any extra shit to make it work. Yeah. So, uh, what would this be? You would this just would put just that be 90 or negative 90. Plus yeah, 90. Yeah. 90. So, we just change this to 90 real fast. 90. And run that again. There we go. And now you should. We should see your club show up looking good. All right. And nice. now if you go unlock a new weapon, we should see that new weapon appear when you restart, right? Yeah. Uh, isn't there a button in here to clear the player preps? Because I also want to see it. Um, I don't know if there's a button built in, but you can just add one. It's just player preps .clear. So You just go I add it in your main menu added display. One. In fact, I would probably just add in a button in your main menu display to set the weapon name and one to clear. Um, so you could just save those both off. You can run through them really quick. Let's see here. Is there a simple way to delete all your press? I thought I, I just I, I thought I'd seen something that they added it. I don't know. Oh, if I they have, so. I haven't seen it yet. A oh, editor press. clear all player press. Wait, what? I, there's a, a post. It says there's now a edit clear all player press. Uh Oh, right there. Second, third from the bottom. Third from the bottom. Nice. There we go. Oh, we found something yeah. new. Hopefully, everybody else just learned something new, too. That's nice. Now we I, I, I saw stuff. that in a post the other day, and I was like, what the hell? That is pretty sweet. Yeah, so, I didn't know about that one. All right, this yeah. stream was worth it alone just for that. Just <laughs> that one thing that I've learned. Sweet. Huh? Why is the weapon so much smaller? That's weird. What's the scale? The scale, oh, the scale was. What about the one, scale of the I child wonder. of that weapon? Is that one scaled uh, down yeah. for your in game version? It is, yeah. it is. That's why you've got, so you can just scale up that parent again, the weapon display position by two. Or I just mean, set that back to one, one, right? Yeah, because that's what it's going to show up as in the game. And so we don't need to scale it down in the menu. Yeah, it's already got the scale down on the weapon. So. Fun nice. Stuff. Other people already knew about that clear player preps button. Apparently, it's been there for a while. I, I missed that. Totally blind to it. I was actually going to yeah. do a stream on some of the new 2020.2 stuff soon, though. So probably next week. So if anybody's curious about the new 2020 stuff, make sure you're subscribed and ready for that. I'll go through and vote on some of the new stuff. Did it work though? Yep. Look at that. It did. Yeah. We got the weapon sort in there. Thing. It looks good. We can probably put in those animations later, but it it still feels pretty nice. So I'm going to do a commit here um looking good i think you got to go grab that um what was the other weapon the axe yeah it's like now it shows up in, at the club um, in the axe. actually when you add in the code um for well how, do, how does that work when you go into level two so level two yeah level two i mean even at the beginning of level one it doesn't exist yet now um Oh, okay. because right now it always just selects the same weapon. So we're going to have to fix that for sure. Um, yeah, I want to fix that and then play through level one, pick up the axe and see if it works in two. Yeah, so I guess the first thing we need to do, um, we might need to pick up the axe first, just because even in level one, we don't change the weapon. Um, yeah, let's so, just take a look. Uh, yeah, it would be. I assume it's going to be the same at every level right it should be the same in every level wherever you're have... assigning the weapon you're just going to get the weapon from the weapon manager instead of whatever the default was right yeah yeah i think that makes sense so um in here uh managers weapon manager um yeah so this thing <clears throat> Not gonna be the main menu display, but we have. Oh no, we just need to put out, move over these, um, these things, and find a good place off off screen to to make them appear. So let's open this up first. 
we'll drag these in here. This probably should end up being a prefab eventually. I was going to say, it seems so far like it, uh, it's on that track to being a prefab at the weapon manager. I, I'm not seeing any difference yet between scenes. You're pretty careful about separating out the menu stuff and the and all that logic from the actual weapon manager stuff. Yeah, okay. So, uh... That's this object like way off in the side of the screen. I see like some little tiny dot way off in the side of your screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Right. And then we'll just drop that back. And uh, okay. So in the very first waypoint, we're going to like, we have the intro that ends up firing off. Um, in that intro, we have a tag. Uh, let's just take a look at what that looks like. This is one of the ink dialog tags. Yep. Okay. Uh, in ink, there is this select uh, weapon default, and I, I guess I had put in default sword in here, but that's not necessarily uh, going forward what we're going to be doing. And so I might have. You don't to... even really want to select the weapon, right? You just kind of want to equip your selected weapon. Yeah, exactly. Right, so that's probably going to need to change here pretty soon. Um, and so when that fires off, uh, we have inside the dialog manager. Um, oh, you have see. a dialog weapon manager? That's the one that listens for think, the event, right? Yeah, this one listens for the select weapon, but this is, oh, I guess it is select yeah. weapon. Hmm. You could also just listen in here for an equip weapon. Yeah, the default sword. Okay, so let me find out where that sword is. <laughs> but you don't want to get that sword, right? I know. I don't. I don't want the original sword anymore, right? Uh, oh, okay. you want to get rid of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need. I need to uh, figure out exactly. Well, is the code actually getting that sword though? Because it, it's did you it's look getting the... the one that's like stuck in the wall here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So this one right here, select weapon, God. default sword. Ah, okay. Um, and so, <clears throat> and it has a number of events it fires off when you when you grab it. Um, and so we're gonna have to create some analog for that as well. So um, you know, it right. turns a number of game objects off, and so we'll have to figure that out. Um, it is still a weapon pickup though. Uh, so and it's just sitting in the scene. So actually, theoretically, this should be, this should work. But <clears throat> if it's the default, then we should just go get the one from the prefs, and it should start working. Oh yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we just say something like, if uh, tag, oops, let me get this into focus so you can actually watch it without me. Um, if uh, tag dot starts with, and then we just say select dash weapon dash default. Um, okay. That'll give us that. And then we can do else, it'll just go through the default workflow, right? Yep. Um, and we're just finding it and then we're grabbing it by the name. So, well, so if your tag starts with default, can't you just change the tag to? Yeah, one. exactly. So that's probably what we want to do is just say uh, tag equals and then the player prefs. Yeah, and the, the loading that one that you've saved off that you picked up last. Let's turn and play. So I think it was like pref constants or something. Dot. Yeah. Uh, select and one. then. Dot. The default. All right. So that'll just go and get the appropriate one and attach it up. Nope, but it will not run your weapon pickup on your default weapon uh, that, that runs those other scripts. So you might want to oh, just grab yeah, that yeah. thing and run the pickup on it, or move those in, like move those events onto the, I don't know, weapon dialog. I don't know where those would go. That would be a actually that's scene specific, right? In fact, yeah. Um, I mean, so could... right now, all it's doing is allowing the escort to continue. So I think everything else, I think, is just re redone. So um, oh, we, we okay. probably just need to figure out a good way to move this to the appropriate spot. And I think it's 
the dialogue ends there anyway, so we, we might actually have not broken anything. So, um, oh, okay. Let's just try that out. Let's see if it works. I, with the exception of the weapon that's stuck in the wall there, um, that thing that that thing's display is not going to go away this time. I think. Oh yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba. Aha! It blew up. Uh oh. Your weapon mount has not been assigned. That's depressing. Uh, but weapon mount is um, where is that assigned? That's assigned in. It is uh the uh. Double click on that red spot. It's not letting me. It's not actually pulling up the code base. Here we go. Oh. There we go. I think. Oh, your prefab for weapon mount. <laughs> And that's because it's on one of your pickups. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, it's probably the ones that you copied and pushed off to the side of the scene or something. Yep. This, uh, yeah. So this player weapon skull thing. Um, oh, and those are referencing a prefab, right? Yeah. So this prefab right here is the one that we need on all of the other ones in that manager. Oh, okay. Um, what were they referencing now? I don't. I think it's. I think it's empty. Yeah, it's null. So all of these need this. There you go. And then save that. And then oh, we're gonna probably have to get all the sound and stuff to show up in here. So the these these Unity events are gonna need to be reconfigured. Um, but we should at least see something a little different here. All right, there he is. He's alive. Playing with the fire and the animated text. Thanks again, Jason, by the way. That was a Jason story, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> You'd mentioned it earlier, and I was not surprised at all that that, that came from him. All right. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. another exception. I don't know how that happened. Null reference you must exception. be a terrible coder, Chris. Time exactly, to quit. exactly. This is very You got very an sad. error. Your rage manager. Oh. I, oh. I've been trying to ra ra manage my rage. So. so this is a thing that was on weapons, but it's missing from your cur current weapon. Yeah, so we are going to have to do some more wiring and configuring here. Okay. Um, Why so the does player it not weapon have a rage mount. manager parent on that prefab? I think it might be... If you click on the error, it should select your object, too, the one that, that's offending. Uh, it's supposed it's not. to. If you click on it in the console window. Yeah, it's like if I go back and forth here, it's not yeah, not pulling it up. It's not highlighting it in the hierarchy. I mean, you no, might only flash I... it. You might. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, it, it seems to have had an issue. But I think um, so. The rage manager right here is again part of the rage overlay. Um, but that's not apparent of uh, the thing that it's looking at. No, yeah, and in fact, uh, this might be per, have to be configured per scene, um, unfortunately. So can you take just a look find that. that rage manager instead of getting it as a parent? Yeah, yeah, I could do, do that. find object and type on it and grab it. Um, we can do instead that of having to now, care about sure. the hierarchy there. Yeah. So in here. Uh, Actually, we can just say. Yeah, can you just change that other, like, what is it, line uh, 19? To just be find object type? Line 19. Oops. Um, yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, da, da, da. This one is also probably going to be. Oh, your screen overlay is the same, yeah. Your rage manager screen overlay. Oh, rage. Oh, no, that's an option. Never enable. Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it's confusing. <laughs> rage <laughs> enables screen overlay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a there's a rage screen overlay and a rage ability and a number of other things. So there, there's definitely, um, uh, yeah. And then it happens when you start to get a lot of classes. If you, if you don't know the context. Emission, <laughs> yeah. Um, this this should be okay. Let me all right. Try and figure so try out. this thing out. See if you get some rage now. Yeah, I think I'll probably get another issue, but we'll we'll find out. 
It usually happens, by the way. Like when you're building stuff and making big changes, um, or even medium changes, you gotta expect some things are gonna break and you fix them and adjust them. Especially on yeah, stuff yeah. that you haven't touched in a while. And this is a system you haven't touched in a couple months, I assume, right? Uh probably nine to twelve months. Yeah. Uh, this is a very old oh one God. from what I remember. It's Maybe. one of the first things you had to do, right? So yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that overlay is missing too. Is that also found by getting a component in parent though? Set current weapon is being referred to by this guy. This rage of which is in the weapon is coming from weapon pickup. Yeah, yeah. that's serialized. So. Probably just find that too. And so we're gonna jump over to. People are talking about project planning. By the way, um, I know you use Trello. I've been using Hack and Plan for the last month or so. And I, I really like it now. Um, I still use Trello for videos. So I'm using it for like video editing things and then using Hack and Plan for game projects. Um, nice. Which has been kind of fun. It's very much like Trello. It's probably not quite as powerful as Trello with all of the extensions and stuff. Um, but it feels very gamey and it just kind of works. <laughs> it feels kind of like a nice mix between Trello and the more complex ones like Jira and stuff that um, I've used and, you know, hated for most of my life <laughs> mostly because they'd make everything difficult the hack and plan yeah. one the thing i liked was like i could drag a ticket over or the thing over and it would just pop up how much time did this take in hours and i could put in like you know point two and bam it keeps track of it and i didn't have to do anything else like the fact that it did the tracking without me doing anything nice okay so <laughs> except so the weapon worked. oh there we go there you go you got it, your sword it had to physically travel to me which is odd Wait, why um, did it, it travel? Oh, because it follows, huh? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. just need to when you when you select it, maybe you want to just set the position <laughs> when you mount it. Yeah, just reset exactly. the position on the on the weapon mounting part, right? Uh, um, <clears throat> wherever it is, you set current weapon, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it may be in set current weapon, just move that game object to its uh, position <laughs> or set its local position. Oh, you do set you set it to zero. That's going to be zero, I yeah. think, for the. You're setting a slope with zero. Maybe is it the um, the other thing that's not in the position? Maybe you should try that again and see it. Watch it in action. See if it's actually moving. It it, it is. It flew into into position. So. Well, know, what what made it, it fly in? Like why why did because it the happen? weapons themselves are so far away. Um, but so, you set the position of it, right? Is it the, is it the object that's on the player that's moving in? So if you pause it right now, yeah, here. Like where pause. where's your current weapon? Uh, so the weapon itself. Um, oh geez, I should buy that the uh, colorful uh version of the hierarchy what i just make player? my player the top object and big and bold Rain yeah rainbow <laughs> hierarchy because there's the escort and then I just need search the for the name mount. yeah player weapon here um, oh, okay so there's your weapon where is that in the scene view so that's way over it, there it's flying in right like so so if you watch this oh that's the skull object though that's not the pickup right oh yeah yeah yeah. that's right so um and is that the one that's far away or is it the blade that's far away there like so i think this will just yeah see that yeah well if you hit, those, flag, hit, hit the one to the right and you can just do a step yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's it's it was just like flying from its original position, which is way off of the scene. Yeah. Um. But was it the blade or the weapon skull that was flying? The blade. The skull. Oh. The skull is there. Like, well, actually, that's weird. Yeah, because the it is the weapon skull because. Uh, or are you sure it's not the parent right it's there? It's trying the child to move the blade over the selected weapon. No. So what what happens? Um, because there was some physics bugs before. It it moves toward the mouse cursor, so uh, it's going to spawn the skull itself way off screen, which is why he's not here right now. Um, Does it spawn the skull where the weapon was, or something? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so before it was spawning it by that sword that was right next to you, and now it's spawning it far away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that skull probably just needs to spawn by you. Or where the sword yeah. is. 
<laughs> you can see that's pretty cool yeah. right there the... oh you got your trail your flying skull yeah he's like <laughs> yeah you can kind of see him going forward there so he's just flying down from being at negative 1000 world space oh, okay so he's just so, flying like, way up into the air yeah the hacky way of fixing this right now would be to just make this um not negative 1000 like negative oh five, make it negative right? five negative ten so it's just right <laughs> below the ground that makes sense too. it doesn't really need to be that far away anyway yeah this will work for this part it's just not going to work when you get into multiple levels your weapon's going to fly depending on where your start position is right yeah exactly okay. but they i mean they're all relatively the same because they were all kind of generated but all i don't right, know cool. so that thing should pop in any second now it doesn't seem like it is there it is it came in That's still but in. you were also a couple meters off 16 to the side right i don't yeah, know where where see. your player starts off if he's starting off at zero zero, zero. good yeah yeah, yeah. I, I can just set it to be something more reasonable just move it right below the player right just take yeah, that yeah, player's yeah. position and or control shift that right just down do there. right here and uh yeah control shift, that's it there you go all right. Oh, yeah. So it looks like it's been many hundreds of feet away or whatever. Units away. Sweet. Uh, all, right. all right. So play through and see if you get your weapon flying in and then beat the thing and there maybe grab the next weapon. It's right there right away. But we, we uh, the escort is not moving forward as soon as I captured it. So there is there is one more piece, which is that the, once the weapon's selected, we need to get him to move again. Oh, okay. And you're doing um, that through a Unity event, right? Yeah, it was a Unity event. It doesn't necessarily need to be. Um, okay. And we have this on pickup events invoke. So yeah, I got it to to just remain consistent and then refactor it later. Right? We could just uh, remove some of these because these don't need to be here anymore. We go Are you just here. gonna add it to the? Um... Oh, okay. Yeah, add it to the actual weapon. Yeah. That's not gonna work so... though. Well, I mean, it w it's gonna be a pain in the ass for you just because. You're, well, it'll probably be you, you have to do it to every level, yeah. And yeah. but we we can fix that. We can. Yeah. I'll I'll work it out. I'll make a script and then attach to a real event, probably. That makes sense. Yeah, you'd have to do it in every level for every weapon, and every time you add a weapon, you've got to go in there and do it. So I yeah, think you'd you probably want to hook up eventually outside of a Unity event. There we go. So that's the original functionality. All right. So now you've got a sword and a run around. Was that a coin that you just picked up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's secret collectibles throughout the levels oh okay cool all right so you're gonna run through and this time we're gonna not disappoint everybody and we'll grab the axe yeah right. <laughs> see how that goes try and keep it so this is the rage overlay so if you turn on your rage ability you can oh, kind of like your mission goes that looks pretty cool how'd you do that by the way uh right clicking uh and so yeah, and so basically you build up a mana bar while you're spinning and so the faster you spin the more you know the safe. more you build up and when it gets yeah. full you just right click and go into rage oh okay i see it Pops exactly right yeah there. on the right cool. side there's a button uh, a little, a little indicator. indicator and then for the rage is that just like an overlay on the screen is it a ui element or post yeah or it's, an, it? it's an overlay there's another asset that i bought that was like these screen overlays um and so it changes the music too so obviously you don't have sound right now yeah. but we got some pretty cool sound going on and um how much uh, was that overlays pack i guess like 20 bucks or something yeah i think it was even less than that i can't Get remember some exactly but, yeah That's the thing and i love so about is unity in the asset store man like there's yeah. so much you can do you know you spend like, I wanted, 20 bucks uh, or you got a hundred dollar budget you can add a lot of like flashiness to your game just from a couple exactly. assets and then you can just you, know, you reuse those on a lot of projects so Okay, so so we have uh, ah here we are my weapons shop right and then it says I did not know you're an expert in cutting edge technology. Uh, Calls you an pick. expert, not an expert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then we uh, you know pick on the axe and it says I have a question to ask <laughs> our enemies right. Um, All right. And then careful. Oh, okay. Well, apparently there's something messed up with the dialogue there. So that was interesting. Oh, because we're continuing now every time we pick up a weapon. That's interesting. So oh, okay. we introduced uh, another little bug. So we'll have to figure that out in a second. A here. new bug that skipped ahead. But you should have a new weapon now, right? Yeah, exactly. So now so we should have a new up. axe and be able to hit play and see what it looks like. Come on. Boom. There we go. Oh, we have the axe yeah. Loaded in in the very first 
Weapon yeah, saving. Okay. Weapon saving. So pretty And cool. it shows up in the menu. And we can go back and look at the main menu here. Um, where are my scenes? I'm losing my mind now. Uh, right there. Fingers crossed. If it works. You should we see. Go. Wait, the axe is what we saw before, though. <laughs> the, Actually, well, no, no, I guess the, we saw the sword, no, right? So now it, if you clear player press, you should see yeah, the sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And then... Uh, now if you go do go this edit. new awesome, amazing button, the clear all player press button. Yeah, right here. Edit, clear, clear all, all player press. Uh, I love learning random new things when I don't intend to. <laughs> All right, and then you hit play, and we've got the sword. Looking good. Another feature um, almost done outside of the bug that you've got to fix, right? Yep, exactly. So, yeah, we should, we should go back and fix that bug and then uh, probably find a better way to um, wire up the escort movement. Um, to picking up that that default one so there's probably a default pickup that we need to figure out something like that um because right now uh well you have an event manager. you could just add an event on your weapon manager right on your weapon manager you deal with um picking up events or picking up the object and knowing if it's a uh, oh no it's not on the weapon manager where is that it was on the tags so yeah it was on the uh was it on the weapon um, pickups it was the dialogue manager um no i meant the part where you do the check and reset the name to not be the default one i can reset the name right is that in the pickup weapon or maybe that was in the menu one i think it was in the tag anyway i, I can go and pull that one up hang on um they're talking about that code that did the search and then replaced the tag name yeah right there because right right around there on 18 you could fire off an event that you were getting the yeah, that one too, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like so dialogue um, manager. It'd be like something like community event. Um, uh, or you could add in a new tag. I don't know. Oh yeah, oh, like on this. This will this will be okay. Um, unity event on a default weapon pickup, right? Um, or on first weapon. Is it your first weapon or? Yeah, it's the. It's not really your on, default, right? It could be a different one. Well, it is. It, I, I guess it's it's the on the select weapon yeah. default right now. But yeah. yeah, it'll be something like that. Um, and, and so in reality, it's uh, yeah, the default behavior is good. So yeah. on select weapon default, yeah, on on default weapon pickup works. So so right here we just say dot invoke. Um, on that sorry if people can't see past that okay so that'll that'll um, just fire off that event and then you can yeah. register on there um and yeah, that all looks good somebody was asking where you picked your music by the way uh also so the music um yeah if you go watch the trailer on the steam page uh that's has a lot of the music that i use uh but the music came also from an asset pack um I forget the name of that one too. Let me, uh, I'll see if I can go grab the name of it. Um, there's a couple of them. So one of them was called the Ultimate Game Music Collection. I think I got that in a Humble Bundle. Um, and then the other one was Sound Packs, Action Music Mega Pack. So I think all the music from the trailer isn't from the Action Music Mega Pack. Um, I say I so, buy a bunch of music packs personally. Like whenever they pop up, especially like those humble bundle ones and stuff, you get you know, a ridiculous amount of music and effects for twenty bucks. I know, yeah, it, it's really amazing. You, you just if you just buy every humble bundle that comes out for game development, um, like right now, there's a map and level creator <laughs> up there, um, and you just buy all those. Then eventually, you just like have a, a huge library to just browse through and and find things that you can use in your game it's really great um especially if you're okay. like doing solo development you're not trying to get like uh you know team keys and stuff like that totally okay. yeah it may it's it, it's definitely worthwhile like i had the inspiration and just having stuff available to go to when you need it really helps 
Yeah, if you're, if you're working on a 2D uh, game right now, I recommend going to check out that Humble Bundle that they have up there because it's uh, it's got tons of 2D game stuff. Um, oh, there. Uh, I'll have to check that one out. The 2D Humble so Bundle? 2D Game uh, Dev it's Bundle. It's the Game Dev Maps and Level Creator. Oh, yeah. Was, oh, creator. wow. That looks neat. So there's this bunch of stuff in there. So it looks like they've got a bunch of... Uh, Kind of metroidvania type level type level creators up there right now yeah that looks pretty sweet um okay so uh, over, but i don't want to script the whole stream so yeah let's yeah, add yeah, in the code cool. and make this thing work right you've got it set up um you've got the event there you just need to move the registration or move the firing of that event from the other thing over yeah. there right yep yep what, what was firing it now is there something else that's triggering is that yeah on the so pickup? each each weapon had its own uh thing firing oh, okay. um, and you already and so you haven't I'm, removed those yet i haven't removed that but i'm going to remove them now because we don't so we remove don't that and then you're going to go up to the um, weapon was it no this is the dialogue, the dialogue manager and then the weapon the dialogue weapon manager oh, so if we're picking up the default then we're going to get him to move otherwise we know that he's going to move um and uh and then and so continue I'm, yeah, is I'll just probably... a method on him that tells him to go on to his next step in the waypoint, right? Yeah, go to the next waypoint, which is probably probably should have been the name of that function. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. And then there's still some wiring that we'll have to probably put together on the next level or on Wrong each button. of the other levels. Grab the wrong Chrome window. Oh no. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll turn that one on and make sure that everybody knows they should subscribe on the screen. Turn it on. We'll see. Or or either that or since it's my Samsung one, it'll just start playing random Vivo music videos. Which is always great too. I'll be in here just like hanging out, turn on the TV <laughs> and then like yeah, some teen stuff pops on right when my wife walks in I'm like i don't know what any of this weird stuff is <laughs> like no. it's pretty it good up, it ends up being interesting but all right so you got it yeah and it worked it did work and uh i'm going running over to go grab the other thing over here and make sure that it still works right it does yeah work. exactly it doesn't um, continue on or it was giving you two dialogues right because it's continuing twice yeah exactly so that that was the the main issue there that we wanted to kind of get get rid of um, let's see if it's fixed now so by moving that off of the weapon pickup it shouldn't happen anymore because it should only yeah. happen on that first one instead of on all these other ones and exactly. moving that event around you also made it so you don't have to register it in you know three different places or however many different places it's just going to be in one now yeah, and that's just for the very first thing that's going to happen, right? Um, That'd be the first one on every level, right? Yeah, there's some levels like bosses where he doesn't move around at all, so we probably don't need to do it there. But other other levels, we're going to have to maybe go wire that up. So that that worked, okay. right? So now yeah. you have the second dialogue here, um, which is good. All right, can we beat the level? Can we beat the level? Yeah, yeah, we can play huh. through the first. Level. Can we beat the level and see what happens when we get to level two and what what to fix next? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is a does, and actually, this is going to be the demo I released during the Steam uh, Festival uh, in February. Oh, okay. So be sure to come there, and you can you, you can download the de the demo uh, during the festival. Um, so that's, and then I'll be I'll be doing a live stream as well on my Steam page uh, for cool. the game. Yeah. So so uh, I didn't show you that. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't have killed those guys right away, but. Um, there were, there were these guys that were, uh, like little bomb guys that can kind of kill you right away. That sort of thing. Okay. They just try to run yeah. to you and you got to kill them before they get to yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me maximize the window too. Good idea. Yeah. If you want to try it out too, make sure you, uh, hit, hit the wish list button. Yeah, I, I already, I put the do. link down there on the stream. That, that bitly one will take you right to the game so you can check it out and wish list it and get in yeah. the, the, the demo and stuff when it's out and all that be sure to uh read all the dialogue i spent a lot of time on the dialogue when you actually go to play the game i know that a lot of people don't do that so <laughs> you had to force it you, the best thing to do is read it out loud Chris. yeah yeah yeah. If you read voice it over it people will listen and watch it if you don't I, i'm i'm skipping it here but uh yeah. 
Maybe, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I should just don't do what Chris do does. Well. Do what he says. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, this is a big event, right? Where you have to like fight off a lot of enemies and the combat gets pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah I should show this, um, the screen overlay. So I'm gonna let them attack me for a little bit. So okay. you can kind of see the blood effects coming up as yeah. you're dying slowly and stuff. Um, also kind of jolts the time step and things like that. So some really cool, like juicy effects that come up uh, in, that, in that space there. And that's been pretty fun to build. Nice. Um, All right, so you beat them and you go get your treasure chest. Yeah, should I click on that? I, I, I'll, I'll click on that one. And then coin flies up, Ooh. pops in coin to the face. Coin. Yep, <laughs> coin to the face. Yep. Um, and then we're kind of just like, you know, music's kind of dramatic here. Um, and then uh, oh, right. you know, brother, we fi finally meet again, and and so I'll I'll skip past some of this here. Um, you're supposed to be voiceovering the whole thing. Yeah, right exactly. I, I don't know if I can do that. I'm gonna start coughing all over the place if I do that. Um, on guard. So, so there's another enemy that's kind of like a mimic of of you and kind of plays like you. It's kind of like a mini boss. Um, oh, okay. That's I've, the I've, sword. This right there that we're yeah, seeing. Yeah, this is a lot harder than it looks, just because I've played this boss um, probably a billion times now. Uh, so just just know that it's a little bit more challenging for others uh, in that space. And then so he's super mad at you. And then we kind of go off to the next level, right? And then we start on the next level here. All right. And let's see what happens. Does it all break? Yeah, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, now I'm, I expect I'm it to break, but maybe we'll be pleasantly confused. I, 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 so I think what's going to happen is he's not going to move, but the weapon will work properly. That's... That's why. Oh no, we got an nope. exception. We got some null reference exceptions. That's what nope. I expected. Oh, the rage manager. <laughs> you don't have a rage manager rage in the scene. Man yeah, apparently. Well, I think I do. I don't have. Um, let's see. So we want to go to level two. Yep. And uh, because it's not because the rage overlay is not part of the managers. I know that all of these that need the rage manager don't have one right now. Um, and so I think what we want is to make sure that this, again, our on validate here is probably need to, gonna need to go and grab that rage manager. Um, I don't think that's <laughs> gonna work though, cause you're gonna be trying to serialize. Oh, actually, well, yeah, I guess it will. Cause you're gonna do it in the scene, right? So it's gonna be for every scene, Never mind. Yeah, every scene yeah. it'll just go every and scene, grab it from its location. Stuff. So, um, and I think okay. it's rage overlay and then the overlay image. I think so. We're probably going to be doing that and then um, doing this. I think and then whatever the data type is, which is this. Um, now, is there a reason that you prefer to find them by the path and then get component over just do a find object type? Uh, yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> in certain cases, if there's like multiple in the scene, it's probably, but I mean, it's probably not a big, big deal right now, but just thinking maybe you'll end up with more than one in the scene and this will prevent you from, uh, having that be an issue. Your name, yeah, got messed up it, there. It, your class name is two, two things. It says overlay a pan manager. Your, your, I think the word weapon got cut out of there. There we go. Yeah. So let me see. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I think uh, it probably should just be to find it um, and go with that based off of the name, but we'll see. All right. So all of these should now just be able to say on validate and it should populate them. Uh, and then actually open this up. And I think in the defaults here, we don't have any more defaults anymore. Um, I'll eventually go in and add an audio for pickup. So I'm going to add that to my Kanban board. Nice. Working, working on the audio on the stream is, would be a pain. So oh yeah. You know, working that. on audio <laughs> live when you're trying to talk and have people here, it doesn't work at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's nearly I think impossible. I'll wait to do that until later. Visual stuff is a lot better. You can see yeah. things and talk at the same time. <laughs> So here we are. We're building. All right. So get the compilation going. 
got the dude there. I'm going to shrink us down a little bit so people can see a little bit more screen. Uh, pick up it'll... weapon. Oh, <laughs> okay. So the the positioning the weapon moved to him, right? Yeah, the weapon moves. It's so we do, position. but the, he does have the club. So it did say this is the first time that I've seen the weapon that you picked in the last level come into the first level. So this right. is really good. It right, actually we're... works, right? The only issue yeah. now is just the uh, delay of moving the thing to us. Yeah, and so I think in this we probably want this to not be negative 1000. Yeah, um, that'll be a, a thing. And then but it's probably going to need to be positioned close to the escort. Anyway. Um, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is just move it kind of just under uh, under him. Probably. Can't you just pop its position to the escort right when it enables or when it when it moves to him? Um, yeah, so so because of the physics swing, I think that's been the biggest problem is moving that thing the box colliders and the joints kind of get wonky. oh if you physically move it it becomes an issue yeah exactly and so that smooth movement is actually preventing some other problems from happening with the the joints system fair enough um but uh yeah i, I could fix that in some other way i don't think it's um, worth it if, if you can just make it pop up there quick enough anyway yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think of, yeah, so this default sword is no longer going to be used because what it'll do is just go grab the other one. Right. It's and just ignore that. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm wondering if the escort should, um, let's see, paste component values and then just move it under him. More. He's gonna put it right underneath where that escort dude is. Okay. Yeah. He just copied his position and then pasted it in and dropped it down a little bit. Pretty yeah. So what easy. I think I might end up doing is uh, making it so it finds the escort and then wires it up so that it knows to like go and put it under. Oh, it just sets its position right underneath and on validate. Yeah. Or that initial waypoint, or maybe underneath the main camera. Yeah. Although this seems to be super far away again. Very strange. Uh, Scort. All right. right. Negative 44, so, negative 79. What's the position on? Uh... So this thing was moved to, yeah, negative 44. You know, like it should have been right under him, right? Is that where the normal it's, position is? So the club, oh, the club had its relative location is different. Oh, really those weird. should all be zeroed, right? Yeah, exactly. That um, could be an issue. Oh, let me actually, let's just go back in here. So in the prefab, this one actually had. Interesting. That, that would have be been confusing. Good, good catch. Yeah. All right, so now it should come flying in. People are talking about multiplayer development now in a, in chat. Yeah, so uh, that would be pretty, yeah. So the, the, the um, you know, my plans for multiplayer you know, I, I, so there's gonna have to be a lot of a lot of design considerations. Yeah, this game for... would not work as a multiplayer, but yeah. I think like I know you had talked about building some multiplayer stuff in the past and in the in the future. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, so, so one thing I was thinking about doing was just a two-player asymmetric multiplayer. Well, where somebody could play as the imp solving puzzles while they're being defended by the. Um, by the weapon, uh, oh, and yeah. so like there, I, I did have I did have thoughts of multiplayer for this game specifically, um, and uh, but yeah, that, that that was just kind of a thought. Um, but yeah, using mirror, I like using mirror. I've tried it, um, and that's been pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, making multiplayer, I think the biggest, the hardest part of it is like finding good network infrastructure to host your game on. <laughs> yeah huge pain in the ass right um that's a pain but also just everything takes longer yes i really yeah, like yeah, every yeah. little thing that you want to do every, yeah. takes much longer <laughs> like, like no, nothing is simple and, and straightforward right there's always yeah messaging and timing involved in just about everything that you want to do and synchronization so it makes easy things harder for sure but it's you know also makes non-interesting games interesting too right like a lot of the time multiplayer is what makes a game fun yeah so this this guy is like flying through the air again here 
Hmm. Is the position still far away? Um, not so the weapon manager is not so I think it's just where this. Wait, what about this... the manager's parent object? Where the is manager's that? Manager's parent object. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's your problem. Right, so reset that, and then yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is just like not ten, not a tenable solution. So we should find a better solution. Well, just, your your manager should probably be at zero zero anyway. Yeah, like, that's just an empty that that empty game object should be zeroed out. And then that you're gonna need to reset. Uh, no, no, you don't need to reset. No, I was already. Yeah, I was already a child, so I should have moved. Okay, with it. that oh, should fix it. All right, somebody's asking for for multiplayer games. What I would recommend is probably um, starting with Mirror Two, and then go with something else if you uh, get to the point where you understand the restrictions and you need something else. But I'd say Mirror is a, a really good starting point for multiplayer stuff. And eventually, I know they're gonna do some new unity multiplayer stuff built in but you know i'm gonna hold off until i see that actually released and stable for a while um and know that it's going to be around before i would try to jump into it too much they, they have that that uh, dots multiplayer example that yeah. is but I, mean, <laughs> I saw that before. years ago and yeah. still don't know anybody who's really used it because it's just yeah. not it's, it's not a full solution right i'm waiting for like an actual full networking yeah. solution and networking stack that's well integrated and easy to use um and that i know isn't going to get deprecated um because they just decided not to do it again yeah so. uh, mirror is a good spot to start uh the, yeah. the hardest thing i think that that really kind of like confounded me was um learning all about network prediction and like having the local time step versus the remote time step and then predicting where the player should be on screen versus, you know, um, and so, you know, we talk a lot about it uh, in general with other game developers that I talk to. And, uh, you know, I think the main thing, one thing that came up the other day, I, I have like this like professional resources board uh, that I keep on Trello for game development stuff. Um, and I think there's a good article there about, um, and maybe I'll link this to you, Jason. But sure, we can link it uh, in chat too. The, um, the networking hasn't really changed since the Half Life Source engine. This is kind of what they were saying. And so there's these articles out there talking about the, um, uh, the you know, how network prediction should happen. But you still have to implement that yourself, right? Like, I think that's the biggest problem that Unity has from a like creating networking games piece is the network prediction should have been easier um yeah this is the thing that everybody struggles with right unit, network yeah. prediction and and synchronization without um killing performance right but yeah. it's always it's not an easy thing to solve and it seems like most solutions don't solve it in a very Generic optimal way, way yeah. and then they make it so <laughs> that you can do it but it just um requires a lot of understanding and i mean i don't know that there's an easy way around that where you can uh, make it performant and semi-automatic but th that would be the ideal right where it runs fast enough but doesn't require too much work to understand um all of the details of of the networking stack um, it, it is just it's a big thing it, it's a hard thing yeah. to understand and takes years to get really really good at it and i think most of the time people just want to make a, a multiplayer game they don't want to do anything too crazy or too intense and they just kind of want it to work well and that's where it's like nearly impossible <laughs> yeah i like it to be like you know you can create a 10 player game or a 16 player game um without being a, a networking wizard or really understanding it too much and then have have it still be okay and not just totally fall apart okay some some setups like that that aren't super opinionated don't require you to build a very specific game um but still let you do the basics would be really nice and that, that's what i look for i think mirror is closer on that than a lot of stuff yeah mirror mirror is going to have the most documentation and and mirror you know mirror is just basically the original system that was out there for unit but has been open sourced and then converted into you know and it's, it's still maintained and stuff like that but um yeah, that's yeah. where I would go. I, I, I was working on a, a multiplayer game before I started working on this game and I tabled it for a while because, um, you know, when you're working solo, especially, it's really hard to test multiplayer games. Very uh, hard. Yeah. And, and it's demoralizing, right? Like, cause yeah. you gotta like beg people to play your game 
that barely yeah. work to test out one little feature and then it's hard to get people to do that over and over and over yeah yeah it it's easy to get them to do it the first couple times but like, like hey come check and see if this one explosion thing is working with me and the synchronization see if that's working like it, it's tough to convince other people that aren't as invested in your project to do that but yeah. you got to have a good good group of people around to, that you can bother to test it all the time <laughs> yeah and bug them and whatever yeah or you just got to pay people to play it for you and <laughs> yeah yeah it gets, it gets painful uh okay so uh this level now works um you know uh level two is good level three should work if you just go in there and validate it right yeah exactly so so the one generic the one thing is is that the escort is not going to move forward on uh so this is the level three is kind of like the initial the very first boss battle or whatever okay um and i won't really play through it but i will uh i'm just gonna just make sure really that cool. um and uh so you can see our four nippled friend here yep um chop his nipples yeah so oh it looks like our our thing is like way too far away again is your object placed is your manager so yeah <laughs> now, reset that and then here we're gonna just yeah we're at like negative five so this should be theoretically underneath the level um and we're just gonna throw that Wait, one more time did you reset it in play mode or did you stop playing I stopped playing. Yeah, okay, cool. it'll, it'll be okay. So yeah, you're fixing the issue with uh, the things flying in from really, really far away. Yeah. Right, because that game manager object was far offset. Somebody asked if I was planning on making a mirror tutorial, and the answer to that is actually yes. It's one of the things on um, my somewhat short list. It's, I, I'd like to do like an in-depth tutorial on a multiplayer mirror game. Um, I just haven't figured out exactly what that is yet, um, but it is coming sometime soon. And a couple other things that I, I gotta get out first, and then that that's on there. Yeah, that'll that'll be good. I'm excited for that too because yeah. I, I like to watch watch that. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I don't know. I, I like making multiplayer stuff and making it work. I think like some like maybe an RPG or something like that would be a lot of fun. Maybe make one where everybody in the stream could hop in and download it and run around or play on a WebGL build or some something. I don't know. I play yeah. around with it and figure it out. Um, but I want to yeah, do yeah. something somewhat interactive. Um, I got so that. Go ahead. You you could uh, you could hook up Discord to collab and then have everybody join a Discord channel and then they would get the new build as soon as it posts automatically, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, and you could iterate over the over it while you're doing it on live if you did a live stream for it. Um, yeah, while it's live. I don't know if the builds would be fast enough. But... But, yeah, it would be hours later probably. Yeah, yeah but it, I mean, initially cool. like collab actually would do like a webgl build in a, a matter of minutes for kind of like a blank project so oh, okay. if you kept if you kept the art assets minimal and kept it down to 2d i think you could do a really cool like 2d thing and and just see builds go out uh, pretty often and just tell everybody hey move to the next one move to the next oh, one. or they just refresh the page right because yeah the WebGL exactly. one, just a hey refresh log back in that could be fun so if you guys are interested in that let me know too just drop a comment or hit, hit the thumbs up button and we do that sometime soon. I think that could be a lot of fun, just showing how to make a multiplayer game while we play the multiplayer game online too. Um, yeah, obviously, make like a it a simple game so you can build up <laughs> into whatever you want. Just add some movement and maybe some blasting or talking or whatever type of crap we want to add in there. But yeah. all right, so the boss fight is good. The boss fight is good. Yeah, we we got that all set up. Um, this uh, is just a little bit off from where the escort is, so I'm just gonna copy his position and uh just Paste pop it on in. here and you already um, reset the parent the manager's object again i did Sweet. Yep. that was immediately a problem in the very beginning so. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome man. Oh. it seems so, to be coming yeah. together so for so anybody just... that's joined late by the way this is uh chris's game he's been working on it for about a year six hours a week about uh two two hours at a time like two hour days I'm yep. just kind of in spare time and working on releasing it to Steam um, next month, really. Like the end of next month, early March, it's going to be the release right around that Steam festival. And he's got a playable version up now. You see, there's a bunch of levels and stuff, dialogue, um, tons of stuff. And it's kind of, it's pretty impressive, you know, going through the whole process in the spare time in a year and then, you know, releasing the game. So it was a lot of fun. We've been adding in new features and functionality. Obviously, I think you can scrub back through and see the stuff, but putting in new buttons, um, new weapon saving stuff. So he just 
improved on the weapon system that I hadn't touched in about almost a year now. So like right yeah, around the exactly. beginning when you made Just it, right? Remembering what I was doing, right? Like back then. Is, like nine is... months ago worth of yeah. uh, code. Yeah. <laughs> Going through that and then trying to figure out how to how to make it so the weapons persist across levels and show up in the menu. So you go unlock a weapon on level three. It's now your weapon in the game um, throughout the life of the weapon or the game, right? Or yeah. until you pick up the next one and stuff. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And so and and this will this will expand into like you know maybe special effects or runes that you add or whatever. But um, I I wanted to heavily integrate the inventory you know management of the game into the dialogue because uh, it's it, the the game's really uh, a lot both about physics based killing and uh, and kind of heavy dialogue so it's been fun yeah it's lots right. of funny stuff right like yeah. jokes jokes and other stuff and yeah if you guys want to check it out too make sure that you just go wish list the game thumbs up it on steam um leave them a comment on there i'm sure it's <laughs> going to be a relatively cheap game so it's not gonna break, yeah. the, break the bank you want to try it out and see what it's like and kind of get an idea of it's only initial price point of seventy dollars a copy. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what about the collect collector's edition? Yeah, more, collector's right? edition. Yeah, one forty nine for the collector's edition. Yeah, exactly. We'll just we'll just go triple A prices here. Um, yeah, well, you got to you got to give a cosmetic. Yeah, so you got to yeah, give it. Yeah. You got to give another weapon for that collector's edition, right? Like that's how you get yeah. the nunchucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, Okay, so uh, level four is good. I'm on level five now. Okay. Um, the managers are going to be reset in the world here. Yep. We're going to go and uh, I'm just going to drop this underneath. Now, is your escort, escort below the world? He is. He starts out below the world because I don't know if you've seen the animation, but he kind of like burrows his way up from underground every time we I start. I don't remember level. that. You have to show it again. I'll, I'll yeah, see it in action. I'll, I'll show it. I'm sure uh, I've seen it, but it's not sticking in my head. Let's see, base component values, bring it down, negative five. Here, just bringing um, the weapons down below so he'll fly up to him when he starts out. Yeah, exactly. And this is like a really cheesy way of doing it. And if I was making a bunch of levels right now, it'd be a huge pain in the ass, but I, you know, and I would do it differently. But right now we're just kind of in a mode of polish and stuff, right? Yeah, you're done so, with the, the core gameplay. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it there, but if you just watch real closely, either here or down watch. here. I'm watching now um he'll he'll kind of show up he, he kind of just like comes up out of the ground oh, here. Okay. and then yeah m most of the enemies spawn animations or they kind of uh bring themselves out from underground or some some way there and actually i'll, I'll show you the beginning of this level just for fun oh actually i don't think my movement is set up right uh, just yet so i have to figure that out let's do this All real right, you fast. got a weapon so um, what do you think is wrong with oh you need to fire off the continue message again the continue yeah so i need to go back into the dialogue manager right and just make sure that this thing is set up properly the dialogue manager needs to tell the escort to continue his uh navigation right? or continue yeah. his waypoints onto the next waypoint onto the next waypoint so we'll see that but i'll, I'll show you some of the other spawn animations so uh, bit gem has been really great like they they came with a whole bunch of different um, animations and, you know, it's just basically like take the animations and, and hook them up to mechanics and then add particles from the FX particle pack and, and you get some really cool looking stuff. So it's been, it's been pretty fun. Um, really easy to manipulate. See how they're all kind of just get coming up out of the ground. Um, they start climbing up. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see the different enemies that are there. Um, I'll, I'll show a little bit of this uh, additional mechanic uh, as we go forward and kill things. Um, nice. And, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you got the little sorcerer dudes there? Yeah. <laughs> I remember their model name. I've used them enough times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So you see this thing kind of like popping out particle effects and things like that. And so, yeah, um, that looks nice. yeah it, it it ended up kind of being a cool thing um, to do. And then, you know, so, so like when I say this is like a mechanics based game, um, these these shields actually shield these guys and they become immune, right? And so you have to like kind of like uh, hit them in order to get through it. And I might die here because the, the this portion of the game is a little bit harder than the, yeah, the last 
level. You can kind of see like I took damage and things. So turn you 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 can hit these pillars and turn off and you on. Turn the off the shit. So it's yeah. an extra. Okay, nice. Yeah. You gotta so, knock so, it off to make it so they can they can be damageable, and then you lose at your own game, huh? Yeah, exactly. And you just die. <laughs> There were two questions in chat I wanted to answer real quick. One was yeah. about a sink and a ragdoll. Um, I did a video on this. If, if you've never used ragdolls before, it's basically a way to make it so your character can fly around and flop around basically like a little ragdoll. Um, to sync up the positions, essentially like you just set all of the transformed children, you'll map them like one-to-one -one map with your bones, and then just set all of the positions to match either the animation bones or set all of the animation bones to match the rigid body ones and then enable or disable the one that you're setting. So you're basically like flipping between them two, the two, and you just want to map over all the transition or the transform positions and rotations. I think I did a video on that though. And there was another one about, uh, do you need a publisher to make a game or release a game? And I thought this was uh, one that you could also answer because yeah, you're yeah. about to release a game. Did you need to get a publisher? Do you need it? To, no, to not at all. Like so, so on Android, it's just $25. Um, on on ios it's a hundred dollars a year android's 25 dollars lifetime uh ios is a hundred dollars a year at least the last time i looked uh steam is a hundred dollars per game uh you have to pay um and then you can kind of release you know uh, what you want but uh and all of these systems require a whole bunch of like different art assets for you to actually do the, the page right so you know for your steam page to exist you don't see any steam pages out there with like missing icons and stuff right so you, all your artwork has to be there um, and, and that's about it. Uh, you used to have to go through steam green light and that used to be really good to have a publisher, but, um, you know, really, uh, if you look at the publisher on my steam page right now, you'll see, it's just my name and then I'm the publisher, I'm publishing my game. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you don't need a publisher by any means. Um, if you're, if you're looking for like financial backing and marketing support and all this other stuff, then yeah, you're going to need that stuff. But um you know in general you know indie games are indie games right and you can you can publish as an indie and so that's what i'm doing i'm, I'm independently publishing right yeah i would say if you're gonna go with a publisher make make sure that it's uh it's actually worthwhile and that, that they're they're bringing the value that they're gonna actually increase your sales and promote your stuff and all that and oh yeah um you know actually so the question about ragdolls uh so I, I know that uh kyle has been on your stream before but kyle uh had helped a while back with the ragdoll toggling for for this game and so um but they're know, talking about doing it over the network apparently oh really okay Sink, yeah syncing so the ragdolls similar. over the network <laughs> the yeah which i think would I be... I, I, so i don't think you know so some some people do like physics over the network but like if you look at games like overwatch right like the number of synchronized physics objects in overwatch is actually very small right like yeah. you know it's the basketball in the very beginning of the, of the level and it's like maybe um junk rats grenades or something right like uh in in most cases i think a physics simulation because you'd have to run physics prediction and then which is expensive and then the physics simulation locally and then you'd also have to you know send over the physics values over the network and then run prediction on that based on the time step um you know doing physics over the network and then a ragdoll on top of that i think you're you're asking for a lot of pain yeah so <laughs> I would, a lot of the time it would just fake that too like fake yeah. the uh ragdoll and play an animation and you know have a couple of different ragdolled animations already recorded um and then just pick the one you want to play and synchronize which one you're playing or something but it also like a lot of the time when things aren't synchronized over the network like that that aren't actually gameplay impacting nobody notices anyway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. if it's not an object that everybody's interacting with like if it's a non-interactable thing yeah okay like uh, a dead thing's body you know <laughs> like yeah like, like a rag doll of a character's body flying off like yeah sometimes you have like pottery and breakable stuff and stuff like that. it's not broken on the other machine it's only broke you know stuff stuff that's non-consequential to gameplay sometimes you actually have their multiplayer games that you don't synchronize those yeah um okay so i'm going to again move my managers into position reset that and we're gonna do this um and maybe I can tell you what's up next because we're almost done with this. Um, yeah, we're fixing up level six. There's a couple more levels you were just going to fix the manager on for the um, progression, and then we'll dive into maybe one more feature. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. We, I'll try and find something that'll be uh, good. Actually, um, one that can be maybe more programming heavy is uh, I need. I wanted to make sure that all of my materials are uh, color transitions on my my materials are going to be done in, in uh, property blocks, and then um, and then when reviewing that, I want to go and make sure that all of my enemies, when they take damage and they're not dead yet that the color, their, their material color change slowly changes to red as they get closer to death. Okay, so some, um, like, some health indicators on the enemies as they're going down. By yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, Based that on sounds like materials. a fun one. The game yeah. name is a Skull's Impossible Quest, not Battle Axe 2, though. That's the project. Yeah. Um, and there's <laughs> a link, as uh, Axe 2. that bit.ly link on the stream should take you right to the Steam page. You can go grab it, um, or I guess you can't grab it, but you can wishlist it. Um, and just check it out and see see what Chris has been putting together and you know, play it when play it when it comes out. You know, get the collector's edition. All right, All right so you're resetting so... the weapon manager. And on these ones, again, just moving the position to be right below the escort so that the weapon just kind of flies up to the escort when he's ready to use it. And how many yep. levels do you have total? You built look like 12, uh, I think? 12, yeah, 12, 12 main levels for the main storyline. Um, okay. And then I'm planning on adding more after after the launch of the game. Yeah, wait till everybody uh, plays through the 12 and starts asking for number 13. Asking for more, yeah, exactly. Uh, but the, you know, it's a complete storyline beginning to end um, and and things along those lines. So it's, uh, it's like already a full game, but I, I do have plans for, like add on content to, you know, um, anything that can make purchasing more appealing as I go, that sort of thing. It should be continue. Um, nice. Continue. Yep. So that's it. So I think those are the two things that I need to do to every level is, is move it over and then allow for the continue. Um, so I'm gonna make myself a checklist. Um, um, move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, uh this is the boss level so i oh actually no i do need that um hang on you're in play mode yeah i i know i know i just removed it from play mode but I'm oh okay to, you're re-adding i'm it just adding it back it. let me i'll, I'll double check that because this level uh he does move on waypoints oh Not an exception what'd you hit he broke the uh, game again continue. okay i did break the game again let's see here Try this one more time. Okay, move the manager, and then I need to uh, set dialogue manager, and then I need to um, continue port. How do you code together in Unity? Oh, so people ask. I, you, I'll let you find those things real quick. Um, I'm gonna ask this one. So if you yeah. want to work together with somebody on a project in Unity, assuming you're talking about uh, source control in general, or how do you share the project, you, um, the best options are, yeah, using some sort of a source control like Git or Perforce or SVN or Unity's uh, built-in collaborate. Is If you've never used any source control, it can be the easiest to get started with. And then you essentially just make changes, commit those changes, push them up. And then anybody else that has access on your team can just pull those changes down or even get notified when those changes occur and then pull them down. Um, and it's a general same process for just about any software development. It works the same for games. You just have to make sure that when you're building things, you uh, take it into account and don't have just giant single things because it gets hard to work together if you both have to work on the same object or something. But if you can split it up logically, it's not too bad. And you basically yeah, you use some sort of source control. All right, did you get it working, Chris? Yeah, this is a little. This is one is a little different, uh, and so it's good that we went, we're going in and checking every level because um, this one starts with the disabled uh, with a disabled uh, movement object. Oh, um, okay. And so, uh, so you actually want to enable yourself in continue, right? Yeah, Probably exactly. Just do enabled equals true. Well, actually, it shouldn't be like what's weird is it shouldn't be calling continue here. I'm trying Why to not? think of it. You hooked it up. Oh, in it's not right? enabled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't enabled yet. So before um, when we selected it. Uh, or you could just add the, the weapon, event in there to enable it too. Yeah, exactly. Like when you um, call it. 
And so in our dialogue manager in here, um, we probably want these to be transposed a little bit, but this one is just going to be game object dot set active. No, you don't want game object dot set active because you, you just want to turn on that component, right? Oh, that component. You want to yeah, do that right. escort movement dot enabled. That one, yeah. Enabled, true. And then escort movement dot continue. Continue. You are correct, I believe. Let's see if it works. This is like my favorite model. Realm. He looks happy to see you. Yes. Oh, oh no. he threw an exception at you too. He was very happy to throw that at you. Yes, exactly. The boss just throws exceptions for you. <laughs> uh, okay, so the this is kind of and some text flying out. That's gonna be my uh, my next game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact, I'm wondering if what was null. Where was the exception? The um, the agent here, the nav mesh agent, which oh, is really no odd. Agent on that thing. Yeah, oh. so so that fired before the start was called. Um, oh, and your Git components not is it is the agent uh, disabled? Oh, that's true. Let me see here. Uh, I think it was disabled. Let me un. No, it's uh, it was enabled. Yeah. Um, oh, your your start method didn't call. Yeah. the object wasn't enabled yeah but i was calling enable right you're calling enable but then you're instantly trying to access the agent before you've let a frame hit for the start to call got it so start start won't call until the next frame after you enable that thing yeah so okay. the agent so, doesn't exist yet so you just need to cache that agent um i don't know some other time either either on demand or i mean theoretically i could just put it as a you just do a check to see if you don't have an agent or yeah, you could serialize build it and just do it in on validate. And then when you hit play, you're good. Yeah, that should fix it up, right? And so in here, we can just say that this belongs in here. Yep. And that's it. Um, and in fact, I should probably do that to his prefab. To the, oh, his actual prefab has it? Yeah. yeah there we go. There you so, go. Yeah, that's, that's much better. Now it'll be everywhere. And uh, it'll just go, oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't say if it's null. I think it will have the same exception because I think it's going to replace it with null in a second here. Oh, because oh, you're doing a search for it. Somebody's well, asking thing... if you could use awake. And the answer to that one's uh, no, just because the object's not enabled. The problem is that start and awake are both not getting called. Um, and th they're getting called, but they're getting called when he turns the thing on, which is after he calls the thing that's trying to reference the nav mesh agent. So you got to do that um, before. So you just you just move that to uh, on an or on validate and. Uh, uh, well, it's it's all it's all set now. I think oh, okay. We're fine at this Did you point. remove just... the part that was clearing it out? Uh, it wasn't getting cleared out. It was actually that same code that wasn't getting called. So this would have come back null, but I, I realized that's not true. It would come back, but this this code never runs in that situation. Oh, okay. So. Well, you should probably still fix that's that right. one, right? I, I think it's okay because uh, it'll just it'll have the original value, and then it'll just replace it with this value um, if if it's not set. I guess it's okay. set in every other level as well. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I think I'll leave it there. It's fine um okay so we are done with level six um and then your task is oh, it is oops. noon it is noon apparently. oh that's a good task somebody was um, asking about the dialogue by the way um i was yeah. explaining it. it's the dialogue for this thing is all stored in dot ink files which uses inkle and ink and inky which are the language the tool and the editor um, and not not in that order, I don't think. Um, <laughs> you have to get the order right. But um, it, it is essentially like a text file that allows you to do full storyline stuff outside of Unity, and you can integrate it into any game engine. They've got uh, hooks or basically APIs that allow you to use their their little flow system inside your engine and make it really easy to do just nice dialogue that you can 
write outside of the editor very easily and do a bunch of semi-advanced um, looping and bouncing around and stuff like chapter driven stuff um, and then fire events too. It's a pretty cool system. I'm going to do a video on it soon. I actually started playing with it a lot after Chris and I think it was probably Jason's story again recommended it. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is pretty neat. I'm going to play with it and I finally found a use for it in a video. So I've got a video coming up sometime soon that I'm working on that'll show how to do like a, a nice simple dialogue system similar to what Chris has here. Um, obviously without the full game behind it, but like going through the dialogue, firing off some events and stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that, make sure that you um, follow the the thing that was up there before and said to subscribe that has now disappeared again. Um, and subscribe and be ready for that and hit the thumbs up button too. So we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Um, all right, Chris. How's it going? Level seven done? Level seven's done. <clears throat> all right. Moving on. Four, five levels to go. Yeah. Well, luckily, this process has very much simplified down to move an object, move another object, hit play, and see if it works, right? And then yep. fix, fix exactly the thing it. that doesn't work because we have an edge case on that level, which is yeah. pretty common. Uh, All right. Base component values minus five. And then we're going to tell the escort to go forward again. I have a checklist now, so I'm actually remembering what I need to do. Oh, OK. That also helps. So, then escort movement, and then continue. Continue, yep. And then run through that. <clears throat> yeah, scene references and stuff can be kind of a pain having to go through and rehook everything up constantly. Yeah. It's it's really just because the prefab structure in the game uh, is is not optimal. I'm going to go through and and redo some of this stuff uh, as we go forward. So that looks like it's working. Yeah, um, redoing those always ends up breaking things, right? Like the second you redo it, you're going to have a broken game for an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I know what that's like, but eventually you got to do it, right? You get you get things all set up, and you got to just go through and clean it up yeah it wouldn't be nearly as interesting for this stream to do that <laughs> no that would be relatively boring you would go through a bunch of work and be like okay it's now the same but i didn't have to do anything manually <laughs> yep. these component values All right, so you paste that in. five we're gonna go into the hud canvas grab the dialogue manager add an event drop the escort in there Go to the escort movement, tell it to continue, and save, and then try it out. <clears throat> All right, and go through some more questions while we test out that level. So, any advice on promoting your first commercial game? I don't have any oh, following yeah. yet. Not sure where to get interest. I mean, you were giving me some some of your lessons learned, right, on this just a couple yeah. days ago, and things that you would have done differently on promoting your game. So. Yeah, I think uh, one one really big um, one really big thing that uh, I would I would recommend is getting your so if you if you plan to go on Steam I would I would get your Steam page up as early as possible because wish lists are actually really important. You're talking before um, you've even developed the game, right? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So if you have art direction and you have some artwork that you can put into a uh a more, more maybe more cinematic trailer with like you know just like really early on just start collecting those wish lists because they say that like your first re release day is really important to, to know about wish lists um i also think just like working on uh making sure that your um you know social media presence is good like i just haven't had enough time to do social media but if you have enough time to schedule that in uh you know that's that's really important too and just sharing on the unity like subreddit and uh you know creating a discord community where people can kind of like join you know talk together about the game and and things along those lines like i see a lot of stuff around that um i also think that like once you release your game you know that initial initial launch day is is pretty important but there are also other um you know other uh posts out there about games that do, you know, release to early access, and then they continuously add things to the game all the time based on their uh, players' feedback. And that has also really uh, worked for them in making the game successful. And so my plan is to kind of do a little bit of each. Uh, I really wish that 
a year ago, I had set up a Steam page so that people would start have, would have started wishlisting back then. Um, but now that we're, you know, now that I'm here, I, I've recently created the Steam page, like maybe last month or so. Um, and so just like working to make sure that people, you know, get exposure to the game and, you know, doing, doing events like this one to, to get, you know, get it out there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, a lot of it is just like people, people are probably going to like playing the game that you make, but they probably will never find out about it. That is very <laughs> often awesome so, the case. Yeah, that's the hardest part uh, is standing yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So finding ways to stand out, I, I think, you know, so, so that, that's my like, but my number one piece is like, I really, the biggest thing I regret is not having the Steam page up like in like the first three months, I think, of, of work on the game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think advertising it early um, is, is a good way to go. Most of the games that get big, either they are sleepers and they just kind of sit there for a while and they blow up randomly because somebody found it and it was just a fun game and got popular or they've uh, you know been promoting it and pushing it for quite a while. They build up a lot of hype early. So I, yeah. I, I, I love that idea. And then let's see. What are we on level nine? I'll answer a couple more questions while we're going through. The game yeah. is not going to be free to play, right? It's going to be um, yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars. No, yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars a copy. I think it's no. some yeah, some yeah. some low price on Steam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm still working out what the price should be, um, but I'm looking at other games that have have had uh, that have similar graphics, similar amount of gameplay time, and things like that. So um my my goal is is to price it or some somewhere around other indies that are in the same uh price range and quality and game length you know so spectacle mystery you know that sort of thing so i'm, I'm just looking at a, a number of other games that are in that same you know my genre is a little bit unique uh so it's it's more going to be around um you know similarly priced to other indie games with similar amounts of gameplay I'm sure it'll be insanely overpriced right yeah yeah, yeah. that's my target it's, insane. it's yeah. going to be one bitcoin oh that's it yeah. it only yeah. cost one 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 bitcoin. <laughs> one bitcoin one bitcoin um but yeah nice stuff dude yeah that's cool so let's see other questions um what games can you make not make in unity and is your course worth buying um yes on the second one what game can you not make in unity <laughs> Uh, I don't know that there's really anything that you can't make in Unity now. Yeah. I wouldn't say that there's anything that like is not possible to do in there. I mean, some of the Unreal still a bit ahead on the ray tracing side, I think, but Unity's even catching up there, and I think most people aren't building that. So for the majority of stuff that you want to build, I don't think that there's really anything that you can't make in Unity yeah. um, technically. Like, there's no technical limitation that would stop you from doing it and most things i think are generally easier to build in unity but definitely some kinds of games that you might want to build in something else like you really want to build something that fits right into a game maker or an rpg maker type setup um but in general i think pretty much build anything with unity i don't know um at least game wise and even apps like a lot of apps not all but i'd say probably 20 percent of app ideas fit pretty well into unity as well you know thinking like mobile phone apps that are non-game and then the other 80 percent be terrible as a unity app because it's just yeah. not not the ideal or optimal setup for it unless unity is the only thing you know then it might still be be a decent option but probably not the best but um yeah I guess that's about it i don't know is there anything you can think of and that you wouldn't be able to do in unity that's a game no i mean you know i think before it was probably true like you know Oh sure. Ten years ago, right? It Even was, five years ago, started. I think yeah, you had exactly. some limitations. But uh, yeah, I think with all the new features that Unity's released, I think you're you're pretty you're in a good spot to start a game development journey, you know, more or less in 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 that scenario, right? Um, so yeah, I, I I would you know the reason I'm working in Unity is because I it, it empowers me to do a lot of stuff very quickly um the the barrier to entry was really low and you know just as 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 an indie um you know it, it works really great you know 2d 3d and i i know i've made 2d games in unity when it back when it was 3d only 
um and it still worked great and so it was harder uh, though it was definitely yeah, it was, much it was harder, harder. Yeah, it's yeah, very it harder. easy now yeah yes yes and um yeah the tools are all there it's 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 great it's a great platform i love it i agree yeah. and if you want to get started somebody to ask them how to get started learning it like i have a beginner video that takes you through building angry birds in three hours step by step explain everything um and there's a new version there's an old version and a slightly newer version. They're like six months apart. Um, you can check out either one, go through, build out a game and see kind of the whole process. Um, it's really not too complicated to get started. It gets more and more comp as your game like builds up and gets more and more complex and you start adding more and more features and things. It obviously it gets bigger and more complex, but the basics of a game and like the, the things that you need to do to put it together are pretty simple and you can learn those. I mean, literally, in a day, maybe maybe up to a week at most. But I think a lot of people, if you have the time and the focus there and a little bit of familiarity with computers and, and game stuff like that, you can get started in really a day and have something up and running and functional that you can kind of show off. Um, obviously, you're not going to understand it completely and it take time to, to build up that understanding and be able to make things on your own. But it's really not too hard to get into. It just takes... A little bit of time and the willingness to fight past um, when something goes wrong. When you hit an error and the thing's not working, you've just got to be willing to search for the reason the error occurred and try to find a way to, to fix it or restart it or something like that. As long as you're not just giving up the second you run into a small roadblock, it shouldn't be too difficult. And of course, if you hit a huge roadblock, just you know, reach out for help. Email me or somebody else and uh, ask your questions. Yeah. All right. So uh, it, Jason is a uh, is a great educator, and uh, I, I really liked his course uh, when I did it. And um, yeah, it, it it helped me a lot with things that I would have otherwise not understood. So. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the name of the game is a uh, Skull's Impossible Quest, and there's a link. Um, the one that's very hard to read there in chat is a link <laughs> link directly to the game. That's a Bitly link to it. I did not position that perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me just watch it. I scale that up a little bit. Now it's black background there. Didn't work perfect. <laughs> I'm going to change that again. Let's do it like that. I'll just trim the bottom off so we can read your text. There we go. Yeah, that link will take you right there. You can you can go check it out or just Google yeah. it on or Google it or, or search on Steam's page, I guess. Works Thank too. you for wish listing. You wish yeah. listed. <laughs> yeah, thanks to, to definitely hit wish list and hit the thumbs up button if you want to see more stuff like this, just kind of going through real projects and and this stuff or just talking to chris about random things too it's always fun <laughs> yeah i love talking about unity stuff and everything and yeah he's right. asking if i answer on messenger um probably not i have way too many messenger things and i never check any of them the only thing i ever look at is google <laughs> chat and uh email There's the two main things everything else is just so many things in there that it's impossible to look all right so look through some tutorials and there's good reading some stuff all right we're all set oh. all right is it working yeah all the we're, levels we're are done, done. Here. now we have every done. level working with the new weapon system nice yeah all so right let's go drop this in and we're gonna just say um who has big a lot of stuff get, right yeah exactly <laughs> so web, uh new weapon making all the weapons work in all the levels yeah sweet yeah. we're gonna push that, that up so you're right and you mentioned earlier for everybody that is kind of joining this late that you're using both um git and collaborate so you've got git set up for your regular check-ins whenever you change something often and then you just use collaborate for when you want to do a build because you're using unity's cloud build system so you do a, a commit to collab and you get a, a build and a playable web version and everything else automatically but you only yep. do that when you're ready for a build. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I might change some of the scale on this. I love here. that the intro is showing the the new weapon too. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I did. I did want to do the uh, little bouncing and spinning, but I could always do that later. Um. Yeah. Or or we could do that now. That might that might be fun. It's just to tidy this up a little bit. Um add a little juice right like juice is the one one thing that i think i didn't know early as a game developer is um adding juiciness like to uh to something is important and i just never really like understood what that meant until recently 
I would say um, it's very important too. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, it's just not, and, and again, that, that Trello board that I linked, um, the, it has a lot of stuff on like, you know, the videos like juice it or lose it and all this other stuff, but it's just like getting things to like look nice, uh, and responsive and, and kind of interesting. Um, I, I think that that's been a, a really cool thing to do. I agree. Do you want to do, are you going to do that now? Yeah, yeah. Add I a mean, little so and show everybody kind of what that process looks like. I think that's a, probably yeah. the best thing we could do. Um, and so like for, for this main menu here, right? Like, you know, how, how do I make this look a little juicier, right? And so like one thing is, is that the weapon is just kind of sitting there still. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so like maybe we can do like a hovering bob to make it look more magical, right? Um, and so it's like not anything that really affects anything, but it, it kind of like makes it look a little bit more juicy. Right? Alive. Alive. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I, that might be a good way to put it. It's just like making things look more alive. Um, and so, uh, let me see, I think I might have a script, an old script called constant rotation. Uh, maybe not. Oh yeah. Constant, oh, constant, rotation. constant rotation. Okay. Um, and so like, maybe we just do like 30 degrees. Let's see, that would be like X, Y, Z coordinates. I don't know, uh, 30 degrees on the X. I so that would it'd be on the Y. Way. Yeah, we want it on the Y, yeah. Maybe not. So I don't know, let's see. I don't know how this thing's rotated. Let's see, sure. oh, it's not even rotating at the moment, is it? Oh, interesting. Is it rotating? It's not, um, I'm wondering. I think the, the rotation's being overwritten by something. We'll have to take a look at what's doing that right now. It was kind of, uh the number the values were kind of tripping out there for a second so oh, oh yeah here we go right so already that looks a little bit more alive it looks um, a lot more alive yeah if we, <laughs> like a... if we yeah let me see if we can maximize that so you can see that here ah oh, the editor just had an exception let me try that again it's such a small change it just yeah, kind of brings yeah. the scene to life a bit it's not letting me maximize the uh the thing there but what we'll, are you trying we'll to maximize uh, i was trying to maximize the unity screen but it just keeps throwing an exception in unity here we go um let's take a look at that right it's just like little things like this it. that like make it you know again it, now the weapon's kind of like the centerpiece here yeah um you know i might want to Oh, what's the uh, what's the shortcut to stop play mode control when P. zoom is in your way? Control P. All right, I'll yeah. make sure. Control P will start and stop play mode. All right, so um, the dialogue or the title of the game is like a little bit in the way, so I might try and mess with that a little bit. Um, let's see here. Kind of make that a little bit smaller and just see the weapon a little bit more in that in that way. Oh, okay. Make it a little more visible there because it was cut off. Yeah, and it's just because I like the size of it there, and and um, so let me just see constant movement. Let's try this script here. Uh, movement direction. Let's do like twenty three. Um, oh, this might be you have two waypoints where you're going up and down. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's try and see what that might look like. I, I haven't looked at this script, so let's up, just right? see. Yeah, I'm kind of looking for a ping pong, right? Um, yes. Moved waypoints, current waypoint, distance, switch waypoint, uh, position. Point. Oh, it's actually looking at it. This is not quite what we want. Um, no. Let's see, remove that component. Let's go back over here. Um, so maybe we can do like a constant ping pong. Yeah, make it go up and down or something. Yeah, and, and there's probably like, I could probably use Dootween to do this, right, as well. If you haven't installed already, yeah. Let me see here. Um, so really, it's going to be like a vector three, and then um, let's see, let's the realizable field, and we'll do something like uh, then let's 
see. Kick off a tween in here in your start. Tween ping pong. Uh, can we can we do like an unlimited do tween? I don't remember the API for this. Um, it's so rare that I end up using do tween anymore. I don't know. I do. I think do... you can just make it. It, you should be able to make it loop forever, though. Oh, yeah. So it says tweens added to sequence can't have infinite loops. Loop infinite, loop delays, loop type. Okay, so there's a loop type. All right, so let's try and we'll just try and do it in do tween. And then if it works, then great. And if it doesn't work, then. Yeah, then um... just manually do too. So anybody who's never used do tween before, by the way, it's just a. Uh asset or plugin for unity to allow for moving and just uh, doing things over time with game objects so if you want to like scale a thing over time or move a thing over time and then do something else when it arrives there's a little library that makes those things easier to do um like i said it's not something that i use commonly anymore but i've used it many times in the past and i know that a lot of people use it just in their regular development because it can make it nice and easy to do um uh, or just a lot of things like this without having to write custom code. Yeah, just because I don't remember the API off the top of my head, I might just do a uh, an actual ping pong for values. That does make it harder, um, yeah. unless anybody happens to remember the the code for doing a do between ping pong of movement and wants to just paste it into chat real quick for Chris. Because I, I don't remember it either. Um, uh, so we, we we could do like an unlimited shake though. Let me see. Do. Uh, oh, what is it? I need to do a. Is it dot do shake? So I think it's uh, transform dot position dot do. We'll just try this too. Yeah, do tween is a really great way to add juice, though, right? Um, oh, what's the? Oh, did it have it there? Do shake dot. No, that's interesting. Oh, they're saying use uh, do tween dot move, and use the loop type yo yo. I think it might just be a, a static class, the do, the do tween class, and then you pass in the thing too. I, I know there's like See. an extension one for it, but I don't remember how it works. Do, do you have it in there? Oh, you're missing uh, the user statement. That's probably. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it shows up now that. Oh, yeah. I think. Because I think it is, because I think it's an extension method. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, it was. <laughs> oh, they're saying transform dot do move. Oh, you have position in there. Oh, position. Okay, that, there that, we go. That, thank there you, go. you, thank you, thank you. Perfect. Right, okay, that makes move. sense. Okay, then uh, you give it the values, and then you can uh, apparently set it to ping pong, or to uh, yo yo for loop type. Um, uh, duration and. Now, is there just an overload for the loop type, or is that uh loops? Oh, negative one, infinite. <laughs> negative one dot. Is that it? Does loops and then returns the total number of loops for this. Oh, thing. that's oh, returning that the number of loops. Oh, okay. That loops. Number of loops to play. Negative one is infinite. Okay. Okay, will that just move it up over and over again? Well, um, I don't know. Uh, set. Oh, there's set loops and then loop type dot yo yo. That's why. It, it, no, it's inside. It's a second parameter. I see it in chat. Oh, thank comma. you for the. Thank you in chat. I haven't had much luck with infinite, though, as you said. I, I think you're. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Got it. Okay. Sweet. Awesome. Let's see if it if it actually works though. We'll find out in just a second if this thing loops and yo-yos. All right, Andy. Oh, you gotta add awesome. your script. Ping pong. Awesome ping pong. Give it a value of what are you doing? like a, a one. Yeah. All right, see if this. Oh, works. God, the zoom controls. All right, control P. That's right. All right, I need to get used to that. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, yeah, well. look at that. <laughs> so it's close. Why is it offset? Is there a rotation? I am not. There must, it, I wonder if the um, parent is rotated and we just didn't notice because, like, the one it's of those. possible. 
Okay, so this thing, well, this has the 90 degrees, right? Yeah, that um, should be fine, I think. What about the- Because um, the rotation's happening. Oh, maybe the ping pong values are, oh, because it's the ping pong values with the environment probably, right? Maybe well, it's is just- the move, Is the move world space or local? Is somebody saying there's a local yeah. move too? Do but I would assume that the regular move would have been moving normal in world space and it would have been fine. And that's what I would have expected, right? I don't yeah. know, maybe the local ones. Let's just try it out, I guess. <laughs> like I said, I, I don't use Dootween enough to, to really feel familiar with it. I, it makes sense because the... Uh, yeah, I, I started using Dootween more when I was doing the coin collectibles. Whoa. Oh, because you just need to change, <laughs> change the axis there? Um, if you just change your, your ping pong value axis, I think it was just, it was, we'll find out in just a second. So that one is just going straight out. What if you put it on the Z? Just change it while you're, while you're running. I don't think it, well, it only runs on start. Oh, that's right. It's, it's, a, it's just on start. Doing it. Zero. Uh, is that where it is? Is it forward? Is it rotated or? Yeah, I think it's rotated 90 degrees on the X, which makes sense. So it's probably, nope, it's just doing its thing. That's pretty fun. Interesting. Uh, so is the Z position moving here? It is, right? It is, yeah. But that's know. because the parent. But when well, you did the Y, wasn't why wasn't the Y position moving? So you, you, if you put the Y in there, it's not moving on the Y, is it? Is it still moving on the Z? It, yeah, it seemed like it was moving only on the Z. That's a good question. Movement here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's only moving, moving on, on the Z. Z. That's bizarre. Um, is it using the right thing? Ping pong values. Wait, are you working on the right object? I assume you are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we saw it moving. Here. Yeah. No, is it everything. Uh, let's uncheck this for now, and then maybe we can do everything through uh, a between as well. Control e. Yeah, this is the learning process, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Fasting. Why is it doing that? Oh. It's like, it's changing the values. Well, and that Z is changing by a lot. That Z isn't moving by one meter. Right, that's changing by like five, six. Is it and the it's a local move, right? Yeah. Yo yo, do transform. What if you change it back move. to do move? Because that wasn't going straight up and down. I wonder what the hell that was doing. Let's do do move y and then we'll. Just oh do yeah, y. there you go. Do move y. I love Let's it. Just try and see what the heck is going on here. Let's see how it goes. Control P. Oh, somebody's saying there might be a hierarchy scale fucking with it. That's that's possibly just the case. Making it move further. Oh, there we go though. It's looks, going up and down. Do that looks move better. Y. Yeah. So we probably want to make. What if you turn on your subtle. rotation? Yeah, we'll do point four. Turn on the rotation. So it spins and spins and rotates. Gives it some life. You know. Although point four, it just seems to be doing a lot. Time to ship it. Ship it. <laughs> um, that's probably too little. Uh, let's do this. Point. Oh, you eight. have that scaled, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm just scaling this thing down a little bit. Um, 
It's because the, the mace looks really weird. I'm going to have to play with the scales of the sword and the mace and everything like that. But I should have mentioned chat of uh, using steadies too to make it so that the ping pong is uh, a bit smoother. You can set the using mode. I think that's just another extension at the end of the set loot. Or, oh, it's right in there. Uh, but, um, there's just like a linear one. Yeah, I don't know if we want in linear though. Uh, I think we want what it's called. I think we want in out something. Oh, okay. Yeah, out. Try this real quick. I don't know if this will be good or not, but it'll look different for sure. See how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody that hasn't used Dootween though, you do have to grab a um, it's an asset pack or a get like a, a get package, I think. And then there are a couple different versions of it too. You search between, you see there's like Dootween, Go Tween. I think somebody mentioned Lean Tween in chat. I think there there are quite a few different versions that do essentially the same thing. They just add extensions and state machines to run things over time for you. All right, there we go. It's <laughs> it moves and fast. In the... I think it's looking pretty good. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it going underground there, so I got to figure out what that's about. But yeah, it's kind of the gist of it. Um, I don't know why it's moving so much, too. Well, right, oh, point. you're open that script up again. What is it using for the value again? It's using the Y. No, yeah. it's using one. That's why. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I think it, oh, the Y the is the and end the value. value, and then the duration. Transform Stepping. position to the give. Oh, well, you're moving it to, oh, you're not moving it to its current position plus that. You're moving it to point 0.1. Uh, you're going from its current down okay, to point 0.1. Yeah, you right. want to go to its current plus point 0.1. Yeah, you want transform.position.y. There you go. This that makes sense, and that should probably just change over to be a float value eventually, too. Yeah, because you're not using the other three, the ignore them now. Yeah, that that explains it. It was going all the way down to point one, so as you lowered the number, it was actually going further, right? <laughs> Getting lower and lower to the ground. Got it, got it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. There you go. Nice, nice little float. Now I can play with that and bump it up and down. Yeah, I'm wondering ease out, ease in. Probably, maybe it is linear that we well, want. Well, linear one is going to be really smooth. You might want like a bouncy one or something. I don't know. I um, think it's fine. It's kind of weird too. You might want a little bit of an ease there, but it seems like it's kind of hanging at the top and bottom a lot. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Uh, so that's good. I, I feel really good about that, actually. Um, I think it's looking good, man. I think we'll probably start wrapping yeah. up soon. It's already getting yeah, kind of late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been going for a while. I'm sure you got plenty of other stuff to do, and we're already two hour or like an hour and a half past your normal like work session time, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've doubled my productivity this week by doing this video. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that actually that looks really good. I like it. Now the yeah. bouncing and the rotating is definitely looking good. So. I don't know. That's pretty nice. Thanks. Yeah. Well, th thank you for the uh, for the encouragement and and everything too. Yeah, this is great. We have the community button in. We got the we got weapon saving. You know, we'll probably move on to Steam integration next. Uh, so yeah, it'll be fun. And do some Steam cloud save, right? Steam cloud when? save. I'm gonna do achievements, play the, the card game stuff, the cards or whatever. Yeah. Um, all that. So a lot of a lot a lot more artwork related stuff, and then just adding achievements. And so, you know, you know, kill kill types and and different amounts of enemies killed, and then defeating certain mechanics in certain ways will all get achievements put in. And I'm going to be working a lot on that. So. Right. Well, people would say they seem to be interested in the Steam stuff. So maybe we can do another stream sometime and go over the steam integration process like uh how, how you do steam saves um maybe whatever other types of things you pull from there because it's it's a lot of fun and if you have questions about it too like 
been a while since I've done it, but I, I I'd be happy to help you out too. And just, yeah, yeah, I'd love just to have do fun it on because like it's yeah. neat, and I don't have a Steam game active right now, so I don't I don't get to play with it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Steam integration is really fun because it's uh it's like literally like you know this dot get steam name and you get their the player's name and stuff so yeah you suddenly have that fun. magic access yeah yeah it's you know somehow magically you have all this information about the player that you never would have had early you know before and uh and so you can start putting their name and in, in the game and stuff like that too it's pretty fun oh yeah no, that's a lot of fun and you start using their avatar and their other stuff yeah, yeah. i like that stuff Somebody's asking about uh, if I know about scene fusion. So that's something I've played with a little bit. Uh, anybody who's curious about it, they're talking about the multi-person workflow stuff. So multiple people can make a game together. It's essentially a plugin that allows you to edit and work on a scene like live together. So you can go around, like see each other's work editing, like as you're doing it, you can be raising the train and placing NPCs and it synchronizes all of that stuff together. I've never had an opportunity to use it in a real project just with um, sample stuff and trying it out, but um, it seems kind of neat. So it's something I, I would love to get into, but like I just haven't had a project where, where it worked out right. Um, cool, so is there a base Steam functionality that Steam requires you to publish on Steam, Chris? Uh, there, no, there really um, isn't, right? There's no yeah. real. You, you you could just do an executable that runs a game and has no Steam integration, right? But yeah. um, one thing is is that there are people out there that just buy games for the trading cards. Um, so you might be giving up a few sales because <laughs> you don't have trading cards, so they don't want to buy the game. Yeah. Um, it's not very many though. That, they're not very many. It's gonna be a very but small is, number of people that will buy your uh, game just for that. You're like you're talking maybe a couple dozen. <laughs> and uh and other things like that right like yeah. so people some people are motivated by achievements and like making their achievement score as high as possible and so you just kind of want to support all those like community related stuff they're easy to do too yeah and they're yeah. they're fun right like adding an achievement you just call like hey they got the achievement one liner and it's there shows up yeah. pops up on their screen and everything kind of happens magically for them and you do a one liner to check to see if they have the achievement already so yeah, it, it really is like a one-liner uh, sort of thing. It's it's pretty good. Um, and then, I don't know what else, like the, the Steam-related stuff. The hardest part, I think, is the images. Yes. Like getting all of yeah. your source Pro art. Producing all like of the artwork. 15 different yeah. pieces of art that are in different formats for all the different places that they like to show stuff. Yeah, and they have documentation on how to do all that. And it is, it is a lot of work. It and is, it's important, it's too, because that's, like, yeah. the one thing that gets people to click on your game, right? Like, yeah. it's the thing that nobody, uh, programmers don't generally like to do that probably matters more than any other thing you're going to do in your game. Right? Yeah. Having that, that art that people are going to click on to actually see your game and know whether or not they want to buy it, um, super, super important. <laughs> you have the best game in the world, but you no one will ever see it unless you go through that effort, right? I know. Well, now like 300 people have already seen it. Yeah. They've already yeah. seen the best game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I, yeah, I think like you've got to really be able to push push it out there and, and make sure that those images are good. But um. yeah. Oh, does the achievement system support incremental progression towards achievement? Yes. So you can mark how many things they have and just keep incrementing that. And I think you can even... I think it just had an increment option on it. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, you could definitely yeah. read them and just increment them up. And then once they had reached a certain number of them, it turned on the achievement. And that was actually like in the Steam achievements, you set like they've done this 10 times or 100 times or whatever number of times when you create the achievement. And then you just mark the number of times they've done that thing, like killed a goblin or whatever it was. Yeah. All right. Well, I think... um. We are kind of running out of questions here and we've been going for a long time and I've had a blast. I guess uh, the last thing I wanted to do was ask everybody two things for first. Um, uh, I guess I, uh, first, let me ask you a quick question, Chris. Um, yeah. Do you want to maybe like generate a couple of steam keys we can give away next week? Yeah, um, that'd be great. To, to people yeah. um, so they can get in and play the, play the game and stuff. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to do it today, but I don't think it's time to really get them in here. But I'd like to give, like, do a little giveaway of some keys and some other stuff soon, so people can hop in and play and save their hundred and fifty dollars. 
Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're one they're one Bitcoin. That yes, you can they keep one get, get one Bitcoin worth of game or whatever. <laughs> but uh, and then I also wanted to ask everybody to hit the um, thumbs up button and just go wish list the game. Uh, go check it out. Even if you're not gonna buy it, go wish list it. It helps bump up his stats and stuff, and just helps you mm-hmm. know Unity game developers. Like I said, even if you you don't think you're gonna buy it, you know, go do that or just go buy it. And yeah, that'd be cool too. I like it. <laughs> if I get a free game key, I can flex on my friends. Yep. Yeah. And, and if you get that game key come to my discord and give me feedback on the game i'd love to hear it oh definitely yeah and the game is called uh skulls impossible quest it's linked yeah. right there that bitly link will take you to it and i'll put it in the uh video description as soon as we stop streaming too you can just click through and grab it i probably should have done that from the beginning um other than that uh we'll be doing somebody was talking about the voting stuff so that i think i'm going to do that next week i was going to do that this weekend where we'll go through and vote on some Unity 2020 features. I built a whole YouTube app that will watch chat, let us vote, award people, and all kinds of fun stuff. It should be fun and interactive. But um, I wanted to do this with Chris first. And it gives me more time to polish that up, test it out and stuff. And we get to go on and actually look at a real project and have a lot of fun with it. So we'll, we'll probably do that next week. So if you want to see that, make sure that you're subscribed and hit the alert thing. And it'll be probably around the same time next week. And then... Other than that, yeah, go check out the game. Oh, I sh- you know what I should have done? Watch this. This is what I should have done. I should have gone Skulls, Impossible Quest. Let me pull it up. And I, I should have had that right up there playing in the background. Sitting in, the- <laughs> sitting in there, just playing playing in the back. And trying to figure out what to do with that screen forever. And that now I know. It, it should have just been playing the game the whole time. <laughs> playing the trailer, right? Nice. All right. Well, um, nice. yeah, I guess I wanted to say thanks again, everybody, for coming out and just joining us. And especially thanks yeah. to Chris for sharing code with us and game Absolutely. that's about to go out and you know, taking everybody's feedback and stuff. Again, if you guys want to see more of this stuff, don't forget to subscribe, share, thumbs up, all that. Um, and, and thanks, everybody. I'm going to shut up now. Is there anything else you want to say, Chris, before we uh, wrap it up and say goodbye to everybody? Uh-huh uh no yeah i had a lot of fun uh you know it's 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 interesting uh working on the game in front of people rather than like listening to music and just kind of like going into the zone or whatever but uh it was fun just kind of explaining out loud what i was doing as i was going so uh, yeah it's definitely weird when you do it Uh, and you get slower i don't get it wrong you definitely work much slower when you're doing that so exactly i'm like like, like, trying to remember what i was doing but like still talk yeah it was good and then you think about a question and you want to answer it and get yeah it's very easy to to get distracted that's why i zone in on music or something too when i'm coding hardcore but (laughs) very cool stuff but anyway yeah thanks everybody please wish list the game and uh and check it out and I'd, i'd love to hear feedback so Thanks again, everybody. And um, I guess we'll we'll wrap it up here and we'll see you all very soon. So um, make sure that you've hit all those buttons and everything and we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Bye.